Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide, and this time, well, it's an absolute doozy of awesomeness in Deliver Us Mars. Yes, the much anticipated sequel is here, and it was developed by Kyoken Interactive, published by Frontier Foundry, and is available to you for £24.99 slash $29.99 US. Hopefully it will arrive on Game Pass soon, and if it already is, then it's also on Game Pass right now. So this takes place 10 years after the events of Deliver Us the Moon. Young astro Kathy Johansson joins the Zephyr crew as they go to get the Arcs stolen by the mysterious Outward group on, you guessed it, Mars. Yeah, it's 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 a game about the planet Mars, of course, not about a deep fried Mars bar. That's yeah, pretty obvious. Now achievements wise, it's an easy but very similar to the first game. We've got a lot to collect and scan, etc. Again, just like the first game. There are three achievements tied to doing things in under a few minutes, although they are easy, and one section where you have to not get damaged. The rest is story related, more or less, so it's not too bad, and if you do end up missing something, you can use chapter select to mop up the rest. It really is a huge upgrade on Deliver Us the Moon. Everything from graphics to writing to gameplay is outstanding, so I hope you enjoyed both the game and the guide. Either way, it's going to take between maybe three to four, could be around five hours to one case, so with that being said, then. Let's do it. And first of all, we're going to go into accessibility options, because here you have the ability to toggle the climbing axe, start climbing with one button, and always show objectives and markers. Now, just to make things a lot easier, I'm going to put the majority of those on, as well as subtitles. Uh, again, that's just to make following along that little bit easier. Um, but, yeah, as I say, this is... If, genuinely, if you thought deliver, if you enjoyed Deliver Us to the Moon, you are going to love this. Um, now, again, I am going to skip all the cutscenes, but first of all, if we head directly to the left here, we are going to find our first Moon Man comic of... Uh, this is one out of 11. So this is our first Moon Man comic, which, again, we'll have to find. You will get an achievement here straight away as well. Uh, what you need to do is press the X button and then the X button again to collect it. So you can't just press the X button once and um, press the B button to put it back. You've got to press the X button twice in order to collect things in this game. We're going to head downstairs and a lot of cutscenes and a lot of dialogue. Of course, unskippable at these these points. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're just enjoying one hell of a house, by the way. God damn, this is what astronaut money houses look like, huh? So you can play with this bit for now if you want, or you don't have to, but... Yes, so, as I said then, we've got the Moon Man comic. Um, in terms of cutscenes, I'm not going to be showing them in this guide, um, but I do highly advise for you to watch them because the whole game is just fantastic. Uh, the reason I'm not doing it is mainly just for time on the video and the fact that I don't want to spoil it for you because there are a lot of uh, spoilers in the cutscenes in this game, so you can look at those yourself. Now, one more thing I should actually talk to you about is if you have a look at the time stamps, um, what you're going to see is... Um, things like scannable items, it'll say like scannable item 1 out of 8, and then it'll have a name next to it. So when we get our what's called Astro Tool, as we just head towards the back here with our sister, um, again, I'll go in great more great detail about it later on, but basically, with all the collectibles in the game, they're basically divided into sections. So sometimes it'll say scannable item 1 out of 8, and then the next one it'll say scannable item 1 out of, you know, 10, something like that. Um, that's just basically because they are in the subdivided sections. But again, um, I will let you know all about that a little bit more later. And things will be a lot clearer. But god damn, look at that sun. That is some... Claire, wait for me. Jesus Christ, I've only got tiny little legs, man. But uh, yeah, so pretty stunning already then, huh? Yeah, we're good to go. Make a jump for it, bro. We're not waiting for our dad. Screw off, dad. We're going for a dive. I'm going to get you out of the window. How are your legs? Can you... Can I walk? Oh, hell no, nah, dog. You make me walk. Right. He's going to talk. We're going to go to the left. Crow, uh, crouch by pressing the B button. Um, and we can pick up our moon bear teddy bear. So uh, somebody just tossed us in a uh, cryogenic thing and then tossed our teddy bear. That's annoying. Uh, just go ahead and speak to old Papa. Papa, can you hear me? But what we actually need to do is go to the opposite side of the room, see this button here, we can now press it, 
and that's going to get the door open. So, our papa is a naughty, naughty man. Now, again, of, of course, uh, press the B button to crouch. Of course, it's the left stick to um, run or slightly jog faster, by the way. Um, the A button to interact with things, and then it'll also be the X button to interact with certain things as well. Uh, we'll get more into that just later on. Um, but basically, little quick breakdown. If you did play Deliver Us the Moon, uh, you would have had to, to get all the achievements, collected all the audio logs and recordings, things like that. It actually talks about Isaac Johansson, the old Papa Can You Hear Me right here, and Claire Johansson. So the, the two games tie in pretty much, you know, square in. So very, very interesting. Um, as all of a sudden we go from diving, as we crouch here just to get to the end, a little bit more conversation is going to happen again. Uh, but it is very interesting. Um, what, what what the developers have planned for the game? Maybe they've are they going to plan for a third game? Hopefully so. But anyway, it is all very interesting. So if you want to later on, um, again I skip a lot of having a look around, but you can interact with things and learn more about this game and learn more about Deliver Us the Moon. Um, I mean, you didn't have to play Deliver Us the Moon to get this one. Like I said, these jo this Johansson family were only in sort of recordings and things. Um, but this game does obviously mention what happened 10 years ago. What are you doing? And it also mentions uh, said astronauts and what happened to said astronauts. But for now, again, that's just uh, all stuff for later on. Right, so we're just going to wait for a moment. Oh, Kathy, you are pure minded. But uh, your dada is naughty boy. He's naughty boy. Dad. My legs hurt. Come, I'll, I'll carry you. Jesus, finally! He's doing some work for us. Right, this bit's automatic, so don't worry about that. Um, so we're just going to wait to see Sprint's with us. Top lad, top lad. So apparently now Claire is the enemy, so if you're confused, well, it'll get less confusing later on. Um, but look at this concentration face now. Look at that. That is that is the ultimate, um, I'm about to crap my pants, so hurry up and get out of the toilet. Concentration face. Oh, that's my concentration face anyway. Right, um, just wandering around and just chilling out for just two minutes while Isaac's uh, apparently diarrhea uh, concentration face starts doing more stuff. Why isn't Vita's door open? Come on! Come on! And now Claire wants us to open the door, so we're gonna be, again, we're just purely minded innocent. We arms just a child after all. We're gonna open the door, but the door doesn't actually open. So what we're gonna do now, prologue is almost over, uh, but we are gonna make a break for it. This time though, oh Papa Can You Hear Me doesn't pick us up. So head to the double doors, and for some reason, instead of just picking us up and taking us with him, he decides to sprint away and leave us behind. So, Papa, screw you, buddy. You're a big douchebag. Thank you for leaving me behind. Hey, my legs hurt, remember? I've got, you know, I've done squats yesterday and, ah, uh, my legs. Anyway, like I said, big cutscenes going to happen. I do skip the cutscenes, but like I said, I highly advise you to watch all of the cutscenes because, man, it gets intense. Otherwise, with that one, we will uh, now finish the prologue, go into our first chapter called Moon Bear, and we will get the uh, second achievement of the game for doing so. Home is dot dot dot. And it depends where your home is. Um, apparently for Kathy, home is pretty crappy. By the way, not a spoiler alert, if you want to know where the wife is in all this, she did. She, she did. Uh, so, yeah, apologies if you didn't realise, but yeah. His wife did. Right, so when we can start, grown up Kathy, oh hello, we can now make a sprint or jog, whatever you want to do, just for the big hole in the middle here. You're going to be speaking to Ryan, so don't worry about that, but we'll just carry on unclimbing down the stairs. What's the reverse of climbing? Unclimbing, yeah. Go to the left here and then unclimb down the ladder. 
That is the reverse of climbing, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, why not? Uh, you can get about halfway, then press the A button to jump off if you so wish. Apparently, kathy has got those mega, mega strong ankles. That's all good. Head to the left here, and then we're going to jump up. And now we can use our guided cutter for the first time. Um, there's three, po uh, three parts. You can just press the right trigger, and it'll aim it for you. But nothing makes you more badass than having a laser-guided cutter. Now, this would come in very handy in real life. Probably not for those who want to commit crimes and everything. Um, but, yeah, I would really enjoy one of those. What do you say? I'll cut your face off. Nah, see, it wouldn't be good. Right, uh, start heading down the stairs, basically straight, and then head down the steps. Then we can jump up, and just drop down. And we can drop down the ladder. I mean, unclimb yourself first, obviously. And then once again, we get about halfway, we can just drop down again. Nothing to do with the ankles. We have got solid ankle. After the um, abandonment issues that we have faced, thanks to old Papa... So once we get here, head into this uh, room, and we're gonna. What we need to do then is basically there's a couple of. If we go outside of the window first, there's little uh, golden locks which you could probably see just flash in there, uh, on the outside of the window and on the floor. So we need to cut them. Obviously, it's left stick to aim, uh, which is the majority in every single game. Cut the four on here, and we'll get what's called a seam point, a seamy point. So press the X button to hold it. Move it with the left stick, and then what you need to do is shoot it at the um, other door. Well, basically, where the uh, press the right trigger to do that, and then head into the other one. So, obviously, if you're ever stuck, just have a look for where these, like, symbols are. Grab this next one, point it to the left-hand side. There we go, so the uh, left-hand side generator. Then run back into the next room, grab this seam point, and then shoot it at the right-hand side one. And that will be that. That'll get them all working. Now we can just head down. And we are going to get an achievement where we just have to basically wait for five minutes. Yes, we just have to literally stand still for five minutes. So have a chat with a, a chip. Have a chat with old Ribo Baggins right now. Yeah. And also, by the way, so yeah, if you ever get stuck or you're a bit confused as what to do, if you just uh, look with the scene points, if you just look for where uh, that, that sort of um, electrical Harry Potter flash symbol is, with all the um, button pie looking button things around it. That is what you're supposed to be shooting at. So, he wants us to hop in. What we're going to do is not hop in. What we're actually going to do is just wait here for literally five minutes. And you'll know when the five minutes are up, of course, when the achievement unlocks. But Ryan will say, like, oh man, you could wait for five minutes? Seriously? God damn, you suck. Um,. So, yeah, just stand around and wait for five minutes. Now, obviously, I haven't put the full five minutes in. I have obviously just kept in about 30 to 40 seconds. So, you're probably going to need to just pause the video uh, just while the achievement unlocks for you. Okay, never mind, you win. Just hop in already. You wait five minutes. And there it is then. Beautiful. So once the achievement unlocks, go to the back of the truck, press the X button to interact, and we're good to go. Now, uh, this is just a little driving sequence, but there is going to be no sound, purely because... Now, games for guides that I have put up before have, like... And Coffee Talk was the worst for this one, by the way. It has, like, the tiniest... Tiniest, winciest, wienerist bit of music in the background. And then all the copyright was like, Maha, you're not getting monetized. Give all the money to me. And they want, you know, they want everyone's money for like, you know, 12 seconds of the quietest guitar music you've ever heard. And this is another case in point. Now, I don't know if this part would get copyrighted, but there is the tiniest bit of uh, guitar music in the background. So just to be safe and sorry, I've just muted this part for the next two minutes. So, um, yeah, yeah yours shouldn't be muted. So... Enjoy this bit.
So once you've tried to unsuccessfully get a date out of Ryan, you're going to jump out automatically. Ah, uh, hello buddy, let's go. And then we're going to head up the steps. Take a right, take a left, and we're going to grab a few achievements here, uh, and a few uh, collectibles. So, see the flags in front of us? What we're going to do is head to the left. Hello! What are you doing standing still? You look bored. Head to the three tables here on the back, and on the very right-hand side table is the next Moon Man comic. So again, remember to press the X button twice in order to collect it. Once you know something's collected, it'll always say on the screen there, so you can press the select button. I still call it the select button. And this is what I mean with your Astro tool. So you've got 0 out of 17. Whatever you pick up, and then you press the select button, it'll come up automatically. Uh, so head up, and now you can press the right trigger when you look at it to scan the WSA globe. Again, once you've uh, scanned it, you should have the ab ability to select it. And as you can see, save in a planet, 1 out of 8. That will be in the timestamp, where it'll say WSA globe, save um, 1 out of 8, whatever time it is now. So yeah, just to... Uh, be a little less confusing there. It'll all make more sense later on anyway, uh, but hopefully these timestamps don't confuse you too much. So, heading into the room and all the way left, we're going to take a right here. Yeah, now we're into the museum. Um, now, if you want to, have a look at basically all of the exhibits. Um, if you don't, we can just take a right here and then a right again. But all the exhibits talk about all of the astronauts in the first uh, Deliver Us game. Rolf's spacesuit, if we press the right trigger here, and then we can uh, choose select after doing that. You should be on 2 out of 8 for saving a planet. That is what I meant by all the subdivisions, by the way, earlier on. Otherwise, we can just head straight through. There's the Lunar Council with your dad as one of them. Um, in fact, all three of them are naughty, naughty, shoddy. Now we can press the Y button to go into our little ace. And we can just head towards this little button. Press the X button to unlock. A cutscene will happen where basically we are unsuccessful, but somebody walks out. And it was a uh, hi Mark. Oh hi Mark. If you know, you know. Oh hi Mark. Otherwise, um, we're just gonna have a little conversation with Sarah, who, if you cannot remember, was basically left to die by Rolf um, in the first game. So, uh, well, at least she's a bit happier now, i.e., grumpier than anything. Which, to be fair, I'd be still pretty pissed off too. Actually, stationed on the moon. I was on the space station, mostly. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, that's why I never saw you on the surface, I guess. I saw you. Oh, really? When I did software upgrades for Rose's ASE. Oh, yeah, ACE. No, ASE. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I mean... <laughs> I named it Ace because I didn't get that ASE was an acronym, so I just kept calling it Ace, and Rosa would just start doing that too. It's kind of a confusing name. Hey, hey, you feel that shoulder, bro? Yeah, man, that is cold, cold as ice, is old Sarah. She hates us because we am smart and am's intelligent. Yours is named Alex, right? Uh, where are you headed to? To be honest, I think my Ace would be called Ventura. Yeah. I think so. About how long you were stationed on the moon? You want the years with the Force Cry asleep or without? Sorry, I didn't mean to. I really just need to get to the meeting. I just wanted to apologize for what happened with my. So, after a cutscene which involves our sister and everything, blah de blah, we're going to go straight forward when we can regain control of Kathy. Jump up. And we're going to cut the three locks. Again, they're not very secure locks if everyone's just got the ability to cut them open anyway. There we go. Crouch under, head to the right, and then down the steps. Now, we need to do a little bit of cutting here. So, a couple of pipes. Um, again, you can always see where you need to cut because they will always flash yellow or gold or whatever. So, cut away again the two pipes and everything else that you need to to get through. And we're coming up to our first sort of real little puzzle. So, have a look at this little elevator. We're going to press the button. That's going to pop up. And then what we need to do is, you see the other little elevator button? We need to press that, quickly run back to this original one that we got up, and then quickly jump over to the other side, and that will make it. There is a button, um, again, if you do, do miss it, just press the, the other button to pull it back, and then just try again. Jump up here, and now we're going to cut once again. <laughs> it's about as secure as the Tory Prime Minister job here in Britain. 
because uh, they've been through about 16 in the last 12 days. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, that was unintentional, very unintentional. Uh, so once we press the white button, I'll have to cut in it. We can now nip to the left. As little Ace Ventura, head to the left. And it's pretty linear, this path, anyway. So that's all good. And we can now eventually... Here we go. So oh, this is just a little unskippable sort of cutscene. Whoopsie-daisy. I accidentally pressed the, the Y button to go out. It doesn't matter if you do this because you can just go back and they'll continue talking anyway. So just uh, stay there. Or if you accidentally messed up like me, just head back until they finish talking. So it must be them. Yes. We feel that we can safely assume that Project Albert sent this signal directly to us. Intentionally. I... can't believe it. They're on Mars? What? Seemingly have been for the last 13 years. Closer than any of us could have imagined. You okay? Can't imagine this must be easy to hear with everything. I'm fine. I'm fine. I assume we can finally justify mission up for then. Mission Opera? Since we pulled Sarah and Kathy from the moon, we've been formulating a contingency plan, should we discover Outward's location. During Mission Vestia, we found indications that the three art vessels Outward used to leave the moon weren't just for transportation. Our information leads us to believe these three art actually form a shrine, a completely self-reliant settlement. But why reach out? Why now? Is it a distress signal or an invitation? Doesn't matter. Mission Opera has only one objective. Bring the Arcs and their revolutionary technology back home. We should analyze the distress signal. Maybe we can determine the encryption used. We're working on it as we speak. I can enable terminal access. Oh, if only we all had an Ace Ventura in our life like this, huh? It would make spying on people a lot easier, but a lot more arrests I expect would be made. So, head to the left. And then what we're going to do is go left again. Left again. To the right. And this is a cutscene that we can skip. But again, I highly advise. I'll say it every time. I highly advise to watch every cutscene. Because a lot of them get quite intense. And quite emotional, as you would come to expect. So, uh, but again, I'm just going to skip it. All I'm going to wait for is where our papa says, Moon Bear, I am a robot. Hey, what? What are you... Moon Bear. Moon Bear. Sixty-nine. Nice. <sighs> so this is just another bit of a chilling path then. Obviously, the further we go into the game, the more collectibles we are going to grab. Because uh, it has been pretty quiet so far. So just head to the right then and follow everybody else. Um, I did try getting in front and jumping on Sarah's head because she's still got that ice pss, cold shoulder, but um, no. So all we're doing, again, it's just for the next few minutes, is dialoguing and just chilling out. go. No turning back. Nope. Hey, you know what I still think about? What? How come we get to live in better conditions than the people in the shanty town? How is that possible? Pure probability. Geographically and demographically, we were born in the right place at the right time. They weren't so lucky. Right. Oh, they really don't seem to want us to go. 
No, but considering the amount of time... Whoa. You okay? Yeah, just a bit startled. Are they insane? They're not helping anyone by trying to hurt us. Don't they understand that we're doing this to save them? Those people will be on the MPT waiting list until the day that they die. You saw the WSA using so many resources to send four people to space? You'd be angry too. They don't understand. But when we bring the Arcs back, they will. Or they won't. I mean, they might, and I hope they do, but they're promising something that might not happen, even if we do bring back the Arcs. Hope springs eternal in the human breast. That's the way I choose to view it. Alexander Pope. The soul uneasy and confined from home dreams of a life to come. Look at you knowing your poetry. What can I say? I'm not just a pretty face. Okay. Take a look at this view. Wow. Never ceases to amaze, right? It's a shame we couldn't build her properly. What? With all these shortages of materials, it really is a miracle that this thing is here at all. You could have mentioned this in all these months of prep that we're flying economy class? No, I didn't want to worry you. Except for right before taking off. So, if you are wondering then why Ryan is quite annoyed, basically this Cephal rocket ship is the equivalent of you going for a Boeing 747 trip and you end up on one of those little tiny carrier plane passenger things where, you know, the tiniest bit of wind sets you about 16 miles off course. You know, kind of like the one off, I don't know, I'm just a big South Park fan, but the one where I think all the boys were going to Canada and they end up on the City Airlines plane, which is exactly what it's like. Thank you for choosing Shitty Airlines, and it looks like you chose the wrong one. And then off he goes, and all boys crash, and laughs were had by all, but yes. So it's a pretty, pretty basic, but apparently it'll get us there. So we go for the third scannable item in this level. Uh, before interacting with and going up, head to the left. And there is the uh, scannable item. That'll be number three. That is the mission gear. So again, press the right trigger. And then you should be on number three for saving a planet. Once that's done, then we can go into the elevator, escalator, combobulator. Press the X button to go up. Apparently, they've just got us doing all the menial jobs, by the way. Press that button. Make me a brew. Wipe my bum for me. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to space to wipe people's and astronauts' butts. I already done that once in training and it was not good. Anyway, what you're going to do is just follow... I'm so sorry. Just follow everyone for the time being. It's uh, going to start getting hectic. So here is the fun stuff. Now, of course, it's not going to be one of those that you actually just press the sat nav button and then the uh, start stop button in order to fly off. We've got a lot to do. So, um, yeah, go, 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 Power Rangers. Wrong part to do that. Right, so what we're going to do then, we now have to put all these in the order they ask us to. So, oxygen on the top left, flight on the bottom right. Next is navigation, just next to it, navigation so flick that up go. again with the X button. Ground launch sequencer, Ground launch sequencer top right. Ground launch sequencer, Ground launch sequencer is a go, then fuel, bottom left. Fuel is go. Liquid oxygen. And then just to the right of that is the liquid oxygen, oxygen locks. Then we're going to go power, power top, and then next to that is Lusif, which is launch sequence launch functions. functions so they are all gone, all on even, good to go. Good to go. Brian. Airtight seal and cockpit air composition check. C 
seal and air composition are go. Sarah, start fuel cell thermal conditioning. Conditioning is a go. Next up then, our job, if we look to the left, we're going to flick the button down, and then we need to press the button next to it, then the right trigger to press it down, then slide it down with the left stick. That's going to get that going, like a billion degrees. Or something, I don't know, that makes no sense. Uh, but that's like the, you know, elevator bit where they pull the stuff away. Or something like that. Um, in layman's terms. So, what we're going to do then, once again, we are eventually going to ha have a look... Lines are vented, that's great. So what we need to do is look to the left again. Okay. Uh, so there you go, press the uh, X button and then move the left stick to the right to uh, take it out. <laughs> and then next up, what we're going to do is have a look to the right there. And all you got to do is just put all four of these buttons to where they're supposed to be. Very easy, just um, put them where the markers are. Auxiliary power units ago. Then we can head to the left, have a look where it says 40, and we need to press the X button on this knob, turn it all the way to up to zero, or down to zero, whichever way you look at it. Then have a look at the button next to it, press X, then right trigger to press down, slide it all the way down, and then press the X button on the little joystick. And then we're going to push the left stick down here in order to orientate, latent orient ourselves out of it. And then when we get the option to press the X, but or the right trigger, sorry, to close the visor. And we're going to... St Man, I'm doing a lot for a trainee astronaut right now. So we actually need to eventually press the button here to our right. So you need to press the button first, then the X button on the slider, slide that up. Transfer complete, we're on internal power, and then we're going to press the right button on the console, the top button here on the right. This must be incredibly intense for a real-life astronaut, by the way. Flicking everything on, turning everything on. It would have been easier if it just had a big steering wheel and a set of car keys to it. You know, and a set of astronaut and ast spaceship keys, but, uh, well, you know, it, it wouldn't get very far, I assume. The steering wheel would have definitely come in handy. Now have a look at the engaged throttler. Press the right trigger to... Uh, stick it on and then left stick push to push forward and lift off thank you for choosing uh, shitty spaceships it looks like you chose the wrong one Five minutes in already? Well, the time's just flying by, isn't it? Right, so we're not quite done yet. We do have the whole separation ease, separation things to do. <laughs> Imagine turning all the fuel and power off right now. Oh, well, that wouldn't go too well, would it? So, we need to initiate stage one separation. So, have a look to the left of the console, press the X button on it, and you just have to put the knob there where the green light is, and that'll be goodbye, my lover. And we need to now do the manual controls, so press the button here on the right, the second one. Now the throttle control, again, once you yeah, press the X button, then the right trigger, and then push the left stick up to push forward.
I mean, come on. How stunning is this? I know space is just space. May not be that impressive to you if you're not very easily impressed, but uh, oh, I love it. I genuinely love it. Oh, and look at that. Is that is that a round earth? <laughs> it's incredible. It's almost as if the earth has been round forever and never flat. <laughs> Who knew? Right, with the second launch sequence, uh, pop the knob down to the green part again, or the lever pulley, and it's away. By the way, I'm not getting into any uh, conspiracy theories, because the last time I did on the Deliver Us the Moon guide, a lot of people got upset because they believe that the Earth is flat. And, oh my god, the engine's going! And, you know, they believe that lizard people are actually a thing, and, hey, I said we're not getting into it, okay? Uh, right, anyway... No engines die in, that's just steam from the steamed hams we're having. And like I said, the time just flew by, didn't it? So that's chapter one done. Chapter two begins. Do you want to go to space, bro? Oh, hell yes, I flip indeed. Right, and now we can start doing some floaty floaty stuff. Hooray! Floaty stuff. Okay, almost floaty stuff. So all you need to do then for this part, um, you just press the A button to dive up, the B button to dive down. Um... But there's nothing to collect, nothing of any note. You're just having a little conversation with old Papa, can you hear me? And, um, yeah, so just follow the broski for now. You know what they call these things? A long gum coral. No way! I swear. It doesn't look like bubble gum at all. Well, 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 I mean, it probably did back in the day when they named it. <laughs> Do you want to give it a new name? Um. Of course. <laughs> now, the one thing I love about that is uh, it, it definitely makes it realistic because as a kid, and it's something my daughter would give it its name to as well, Poop Coral. It's just what kids are. Kids are hilarious. So uh, top notch on the r actual realism on a kid there. It's so dirty underwater. Anything in the water. Right, yeah, well, I mean, not you. A lot of other people did, unfortunately. I'll clean it up so the water can look nice again. Well, we uh, might be about 50 to 80 years too late for that, I'm afraid. Okay, we're almost here. Come look. Want to go to space? You're naughty, naughty daddy. Right, so now we can start floating for real. So, obviously move with the left stick. Again, it's more or less like diving, so press the A button to go up and the uh, B button to go down. And then the left bumper or right bumper to roll left or right. So there we go, I'll just show you quickly. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go, so uh, easy as that. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is just basically keep heading straight through the doors here. And again, and we're going to start speaking to Claire. Um, now, sometimes this may, if you do suffer with motion sickness, uh, yes, sometimes it may, especially if you've got, uh, if you end up rolling quite a bit, it can be kind of sicky, so hopefully you're not too bad with this one. But in terms of floating and controlling, it's genuinely, it's, it feels easier than Deliver Us the Moon for some reason. Uh, so it's not too bad. So um, apparently I'm just trying to um, teabag my sister with my lady bows. You never thought you'd hear that in a video, did you? Neither did I, Ashley. Never thought I'd have to say that. Ever. Now I feel sick. Fine. Just be very careful. We're still in orbit, so watch out again. But now we are having the, abil the ability to float into space for the first time. So head out and to the left to the airlock here. Press the X button. Um, uh, again, after a little bit of conversation, we will be able to press the X button. In order to egress, and then we can start, um, well, start spacing. We are coming up to another scannable item, by the way, just outside. So, again, just be aware of that one. 
Plus, the next time we go outside, we're going to have to do an achievement for completing it in under 3 minutes and 35 seconds. So, uh, we'll come back to that later. So, you can see the bit of space debris. So, hopefully, the floating is nice and easy for you. Just uh, go towards it, and it is this Pearson Space Station debris. So, if you have a look, we should be on 4 out of 8 now for saving a planet. Then we can just head up and obviously go to where the marker is. That's why I always put the marker on. It's just easier that way and, uh, you know, we all stress from everyday life. Why do we need to make our life even more stressful? Right, first things first. What can you see? Is there any damage to the thruster? So, if we just stay this side of the thruster, all you're going to need to do is press the X button on a couple of things. Um, and it'll be the thruster, the pipes, um, and just a couple of things in this uh, specific area. It's seen better days, but it's holding together. Good. What about the pipes around the thruster? They're pretty badly bent. Okay. They'll need to be cut away if we want the thruster to be even semi-functional. Is the thruster still receiving power? It is. Shut off the power lines before you do anything else. There's a big button in the hatch, just press it and you're good to go. Okay. And watch out for the fuel canisters. If you hit one of those while you're cutting it... Well, don't, please. What do they look like? The big yellow canisters. Do you see them? I see them. Don't worry, I'll be careful. Very careful. Very careful. Right, so let's go to the power power box. We're going to open it up with the X button once again. And then we're just going to press the X button where the marker is right there to turn that bit off. Now all you've got to do, there's like a couple of pieces of debris on the outside and the inside. So no rush, it is literally just as simple as again following the yellow slash golden markers, whatever they are. Just cutting them. Sometimes, for whatever particular reason, especially with these big ones, they seem a bit finicky and they don't seem to cut properly. So, if that's the case, just keep going over it, keep going around it, and eventually it'll pop off. But again, have a look on the outside and the inside, and then eventually, we once we've done all that, we will get the ability to go back. Anybody fancy back home? Wait, what? Or maybe even on the ship? What? Oh man, that was a goddamn pain in my nipple bags, but there we are, we're all done. So, now we can turn the power on, but you have to do it in a specific way. You can't just flick the switch back on. So, two knobs here, the one where it's red, the very left and very right at the top. Um, press them both so they're turning up. Then you press the X button there to get it going. Now with these uh, second set, you have to do it in a particular order. So it's two, four, five, one, uh, one, three. So two, four, five, one, three. You have to do it in that particular order. 
Then you can press the X button here, and that gets the power back on. And then we can go back into the airlock. Now, as you can see, probably you can see just at the bottom of your helmet, you've got two. Uh, it's just a bit, honestly, Space Man is just unbelievable, and they've captured it amazingly. But as you can see at the bottom of the helmet, there was there's four little sort of icons. It's just basically your oxygen level, so just be aware of that, especially later on in the game. So, after this, uh, well, this is the next underwater section, and there is a Moon Man comic to grab. So, what we're going to do is swim forward, of course. You're not exactly walking forward, are you? Go through the big, spinny, fast part of uh, Tidal Wave, whatever it's called. Now, just before the big piston's right in front of us, if we go down to the right, you're going to see this rock. Ne and in this sort of bit of ship debris or whatever it is, have a look, go in the door the doorway, and you can see the next Moon Man comic. This will be number three. Uh, we can't check it just yet because we are still a kid, but that is Moon Man comic number three. Just make sure that you've pressed the X button again twice on those Moon Man comics to collect it. Again, if you accidentally miss it, remember you can just chat to select at the end of the game so it's all good. Um, how will How is the old girl? Well, she looks pretty... <laughs> I mean, she looks pretty fudged up, Jim. So, we don't have to wait for Papa, we are going to go exploring. So what we're going to do is head basically straight in front of us from where old Isaac is looking. We are going to take a little detour and go left. And then once we swim around, we're going to be able to get sucked out to sea. Or if you just go through the window, you don't get sucked out. You just sort of go through it. Uh, but just keep going through, keep heading straight. And you can see a little launch pod, or a pod of spaceship alien crafted cockpitist cockpitness. Anyway, interact with mainly the main switch, and this one right here. And that's going to get us in a panic because it's going to start going. Oh, oh man. Kathy, you get yourself in all kinds of trouble. To be fair, I'm I'm thinking that Isaac left us behind at the very beginning of the game on purpose. Uh, purely because we kept getting into situations like that and he's having a heart attack. Right, to interact with Moonbear, this is another scannable item here, so make sure to scan Moonbear. And if we have a read, that is going to be um, number one out of seven for family matters. So again, if it looks confusing in the timestamps, don't worry, I'll obviously be telling you in the video. Uh, turn around, I go into the Torpor room. And what we're going to do is head uh, to the right, and there is the, tor the Zephyr 3 Torpor pods to interact with, and that is number 5 out of 8 for saving a planet, which you should be on. Once we head here out here, we can go straight into the control center, and there's going to be what's called an Astro Talk. On the left-hand side, press the X button, and press the X button again to collect it. Again, if you, obviously, if you want to have a, look, uh, a little read and everything, you can do that, but um, have a look at your Astro Tool. Once you have collected it. Sorry, I'm just waiting for the achievement to unlock. There it is. And it is actually number 6 out of 8 for saving a planet. But that is our first Astro Talk. And uh, yeah, we can now just crack on and go straight into the center. Have a little uh, press the button and have a little chatty chat. Same thruster. How bad is it? Bad, sis. One broken thruster can send us completely off course. I'll suit up. Let me do it. I'm already out of torpor. No, it's much too dangerous. Claire, we have to act fast. I'm going. Please be careful. I'll head to the cockpit to guide you. Copy. Okay then, so this is the achievement for basically after we get outside, we have to complete this section in under 3 minutes and 35 seconds. So immediately we're going to go to the right. And then what, what we basically have to do... By the way, yeah, if you click in the left stick, uh, you can go into third-person mode if you want to. 
So, interact with the thruster by pressing the X button. So what we're going to have to do is cut. We need to um, have a look at the power box here. But effectively, what we need to do is cut lines in the thruster and then cut the um, little fuel gauges or whatever the hell they are inside it. So remember, this is timed for the achievement, so we're going to be quick as we can. So interact with the power box. We're not going to be able to turn the power off, but just next to it there is the power line or the power cable. So two lines are going to appear here after we press the X button to open it up. So now it's not automatic, so you have to aim yourself, of course, uh, but cut the power cable. If it doesn't work, just get as close as you can to it. Now, the, th the thruster is what I'm looking at right now. And uh, obviously, the lines will appear in just a moment, but that is the thruster. So once we are available, just go ahead. It's basically just all around. So you need to you need to cut every single line. Again, if it's not working, get a little bit closer to it, and then it'll work fine. And then once a piece of it comes off, there are these little glowing yellow things. I don't know what they are. Sorry, I'm, I'm not spaceman anymore, or never was, but we need to shoot them as well. So I basically just go from um, left to right, so basically middle to left. So it's easy enough, so don't panic. Um, you've got, again, you've, you have got plenty of time, so really, really don't panic. Um, but, you know, don't dawdle either. <laughs> so that's a helpful advice, as usual, from me. Uh, but again, remember to shoot every single bit of uh, flashy glowing thing that you can. And again, if you need to, of course, remember you can roll with the right bumper or left bumper and you can dive by pressing A to go up and then B to go down. Now, after shooting these couple, we're going to get a little bit of explosion right here. And then the next one we're going to shoot, it's going to explode us off into the distance. Kablam! And Very spinny. So if you felt sick before, man, I'd be, I'd be spewing right in my helmet bags. So once we stop spinning around, round baby, round, round, like a record, we can just head for the entrance and the airlock. If that's all you're doing, you can't go any faster than you're doing, so literally, you just go straight for the airlock, press the X button on the button, and uh, that should get you the achievement called Stellar Excellent Vehicle, Vehicular, whatever the hell it is, but it's basically for doing it in under three and a half minutes. So, just go straight in and... Way! Okay, almost. It, now, if you could get it in, in one shot, that'd be incredible. Apparently, I have trouble aiming. Mm, tell my bathroom floor that. I've got to bleach it a lot. Um, anyway, there you go. So, again, that was plenty of time. So, hopefully, you should have got that achievement as well. And then we go to the next part here, which is basically just another little bit of a walk and talk section. So enjoy the walk, enjoy the talk, and uh, enjoy the dense embrace of the forest. I know. That's why I said feels. And it still looks beautiful. It used to look even more beautiful. And it can become more beautiful again someday. Maybe. Maybe. Are you okay? I just I haven't been here in a while, that's all. You look sad. No, no, I'm fine. I'm glad we get to spend some time together before you have to leave. Girls, we're almost there. Let's keep walking. Come on. Let's go. All right then, lads, let's race. Oh, try jumping off. Apparently you can't jump off as a child because that would be... Well, that wouldn't look good. Come in. Right. Apparently, you've got to actually go next to them in order for them to walk. Otherwise, their legs don't work. Okay. By the way, that whole uh, quote when I said deep embrace of the dense, deep embrace of the, of the forest, uh, that was an Enter Shikari lyric, and I had to hold myself back in order to not sing the rest of the song there. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the walk and talk. This is actually a funny story. It was. I never like going to those either. Uh, but I'm glad I did go to this one. 
your mum saw me staring at her so much that she finally came up and asked me why I wasn't dancing. Why weren't you? Well, you've seen me dance. I told her that getting me to dance was a bad idea and, well, um, I, I was proven right. What happened? I hit her drink out of her hands as I was flailing about like a lunatic. Then a piece of the broken glass got lodged in her leg. Then there was blood everywhere and then we had to go to the emergency room. Oh, Jesus, Dad. Needless to say, I didn't dance again until our wedding day. But, Dad, why did Mummy fall in love with you then? I really have no idea, darling. Whoa. Cool, right? Who made this? Dad. Glad this is all still here. Uh, Claire and I used to come climbing here all the time. Why didn't I get to go? Well, you were a bit too young for that. Still are. OK, Moonbear, come and get your gear. So now we're going to climb our first wall. It's all pretty brutal training for, we may not even need to get into space, but what you need to do then is press and uh, press the left and right trigger together and then aim up and then press the left trigger. Aim up again, press the right trigger. So basically just keep holding the left stick up and then just keep swapping between right trigger and left trigger in order to climb up. And you can do it as quick as pie. So you'll also get another achievement here for completing that first wall. So again, jump up, left trigger and right trigger together to hold in. And then hold the left stick to the right. And then, of course, what you're going to be doing is obviously just hold, um, pressing the right trigger, then left trigger, right trigger, then left trigger. And once you get to the other side, you can start heading down. Um, try not to jump from the top. I think you can actually die from this bit. Or break your chunky little, chunky little ankles. Um, or apparently nothing happens, which is good. Right, after this bit then, we're just going to hear an argument. And this is where the story is going to really begin. Already an hour in? Jesus, on a bada. You're putting us through, don't, don't you hear alarm bells oh, ringing, Dad? The is perfect, Lisa. How? How is it safe metal boxes outside an infinitesimally small atmosphere? How is that of safe? Of all people, you should know exactly how well, how well built Fine. they are. I will rephrase. How do you justify the risks? of taking Cathy to live on the moon versus her just staying here on Earth. You know what is happening to our planet. You've forgotten. You read the same WMO reports that I do, you watch the same news, you... You know what happened to them. Please, just come with us. Don't, don't you? Come on, Claire. I hate you for what you're doing. I hate you. Come on, let's put the gear away. Doesn't Claire want to go with us? On the Prezipe, on the in Pace. So, chapter three is done. Uh, want to go to space, the achievement for completing chapter two will unlock. Again, highly advised watching all the cutscenes, as I've said. Otherwise, um, I'm just going to be skipping this one. And we're actually going to go. So, basically, we're about to head onto another spaceship. Which, as you can see in the top left corner, if you have a look at the top left corner of the monitor there, you can probably see. Abort function. Final go, no go, pilot waypoint two. All right, Kathy. But we got to do some docking first. Don't Google that, by the way. Uh, so press the X button there on the third right, honestly. And then what you need to do is press the left stick to move up. Or basically move, basically move forward. Um, as you can see, the A button to move up, B button to move down. If you push the left stick down, you'll start slowing down. If you push the left stick up, you'll start moving fast. So you basically just need to get this into the center of the hole. The controls can be a little bit confusing at this point, but it is easy enough.
and the urge to resist. All jokes that uh, basically go with, in the hole, there she goes, straight in, is uh, <laughs> it's rather impressive for me, to be honest. Capture now also complete. Docking confirmed. Looks like a smooth dock. Great job, Kathy. Thanks. Ryan, Sarah, you have permission to enter the ship. Permission was assumed. We're already crossing as we speak. Copy. I'll reprimand you later for insubordination. I shall accept my sentence with dignity. Sis, I can join them to investigate. We only need one person. That's not necessary. It's not necessary for me to stay here either. Kathy, please respect my command. Oh, my sister. I am your commander. Claire, I think we could use another set of eyes over here. The interior is huge and built like a maze. We could be here a while. Copy, Sarah. Kathy's heading over now. Oh, bruh is fuming with this. Uh, during the last cutscene, if you didn't realise what was happening, uh, we basically had a little argument about our papa and, you know, all, all that type of stuff. Anyway, we're going to float on through to the marker, so left of where we just were. We are, at, we are, of course, now docked, so we are happy enough to just move straight on and do a bit of exploration. Now, uh, what we're going to do when we get here, we're going to take a right into the um this part uh, we've got uh <laughs> beautiful i thought she was talking to me right there <laughs> yeah yeah anyway we can see the door the airlock go down there should only be one hole <laughs> sorry and then you know if you want just get your bearings spin yourself the right way when you do that take a left again this should be pretty much a linear path so you can't really get lost and when we get into this room, there is something for us to scan again. Oh my god. There it is, right in front of us. It is the Lord Commander's jacket, or the Outward Colonist's uniform. So that'll be uh, for one out of nine for the people of Outward. Right, happy days. So from there, we can just crack on straight. We're going to be gathering a few more collectibles now. Starting to get into the gathering of collectible pace in a bit more. So we're heading straight. Uh, since there's, again, nowhere really for us left to go. And what's going to happen, when we turn to the left here, we're going to see our first hologram, plus we are going to see a, another audio log, or audio uh, talk, sorry, astro talk. So just to the right here, basically, uh, when Ace goes uh, past, he will uh, turn on a whole load of lights. So this is where the astro talk is, and that will be for two out of nine for the people of Outward. So it's just to your right, pretty much just as you enter in here. So make sure to grab that before moving on. And when we do move on, what we're going to do is you can automatically see the hologram. Now, with these holograms, it's kind of like a tiny little puzzle in order to get the hologram to appear. And then a big cutscene plays about things that happened in the past, all hologrammy. And this is what you've got to do. So you've got to put the um, camera in a certain way so that all of the sort of yellow things get tucked in. So if you turn all the way around and get quite close to the astronaut right there, all all the yellow buttons or whatever they are will go in, turn blue, and that is how you will do that. Like I said, it is a bit of a cutscene just seeing what has happened. Um, but if you don't care about that or you're just trying to get through it, this is 1 out of 17 for on running a colony. So yeah, with that hologram, just basically go the other side of where you were just standing and sort of get close to yourself and that'll do that so for this one we're going to go straight ahead and it's another scannable item right in front of us now so as soon as we see it scan it and this one is potentia the arc engines one out of three potentia oh yeah i see her right from here then what we can do is just take a right because we're going to Come up to yet more scannable stuffs. In fact, it's a Moon Man comic next. We're going to take a left. And then instead of going straight down, if we look to our left, just by these cranes or whatever the hell they're supposed to be, have a look in this open door, take another left, and we're going to see the next Moon Man comic. Man, these Moon Man comics are flying absolutely bloody everywhere. That's uh, lucky. <laughs> Lucky they're in the game, otherwise we wouldn't be able to collect them and get the achievement. Huh. Anyway, that's uh, comic 4 out of 11. And then, what we're going to do is turn directly around. So don't exit just yet. Turn directly around. And what we're going to see at the other opposite end of the room, at the other end or the opposite end, have a look on, on to your left into this open cabinet for another Astro Talk. 
Coffee to Jer or Kofi to J Jeremy. Jeremy Clarkson, you can't be saying bad stuff, man. The people of Outward, three out of nine, that was anyway. So what we can do now, we can we can actually exit this time. So once we do exit, we are going to take a left and just gun it straight down. And once we are here, uh, into the sort of bridge room, uh, we need to interact with this stream point. Press the X button, turn it to the left there, and hit the right trigger to open up the door. Now get your bear in, so turn yourself around. There we go. So this is a little bit of a puzzle that we've got to do. Now I do actually end up um, only slightly messing up, but basically, have a look at the top here. We're going to cut this to get the next stream point down. But what are you going to need to be doing... Now, I um, hit this, which is not the right thing to do. So, there are basically three stream points that we need to do. So, um, obviously, this one needs to be open anyway. Then I open that one up. So, this is actually the correct uh, start so far. And then what you need to do is grab the stream point in the middle, turn it around, and then hit the one by the door. So, that is how we are supposed to do that. For some reason, I got slightly confused for a second. Um, yeah, <laughs> so just ignore what I'm doing here, sorry, uh, so, to, to, what I done first was correct, but then all you gotta do is, uh, move the middle one, and then move that to where the door is, and apparently I've just managed to figure this one out, there we go, <laughs> so, uh, we, you know, we get there in the end, I, I only didn't edit this down because I didn't want you to think I was so amazing at the game, which obviously you've probably noticed a couple of lot of edit skips anyway. Right, so um, yeah, so we're going to head up and we are going to do another bit of a big puzzle. And it basically just involves us going around places and shooting stream points and stuff. It's all good. Claire, I'm in the bridge and the entire room is filled with pieces of debris. You sound almost happy. Well, to be honest, the chaos looks very... Pretty. pretty. So, what we actually need to do now is do a little bit of investigating. And we need to find basically one big massive red door. Now, it is the opposite side of where I am. We will be going down there in just a bit. But what we have to do is... It's, it's in the sort of outer section of this area. Um... But, yeah, I just chose the uh, wrong place to go down. So, there it is. The big red door basically seems like a hull breach or something. And then all we're going to do is go and interact with the main console in the middle part of the room where all the debris is flight floating about. And then we can move on. Seems plausible. Perhaps it was an accident after all. Whatever happened behind those closed doors is the answer. An answer we can't get to. No. Afraid not. Looks like I need to fix the MPT converters before I can turn the arc's power back on. Output metrics show the same. The MPT dish isn't receiving any of the energy from the batteries. This ship's operating system is really locked tight, but I think this should open up a door behind you. Yeah, we got some bloody smart people yet, haven't we? Eh? Anyway, follow the marker. We can now uh, begin to head down. So, restoring the ARK, the arc's power is priority, apparently. Bruh, how much you pay me for this? Because, uh, well, I need a lot of money. A lot of goddamn money. So this is the sort of quote-unquote big puzzle room, if you want to call it that. So what you're going to do then, once you float down, you're going to notice there are a bunch of stream points about. And if we turn around, you're going to notice that they kind of look like dice, but they are numbered. So what you have to do is just put the particular stream point from number one all the way up to number eight. You've got to do it in a specific order. So... First of all, we're going to go to the top one, which is the only open door room. So you're going to go to the top stream. Obviously, press the X button when we stop yammering on. Be extremely careful, please. I will. Everybody on high alert. Final go, no go, Paul. 
Go. Go. Power Rangers. Right, so interact with this top stream and shoot it down. It might be a little bit hard to see, but you need to shoot it basically directly down to the number one spot. So there we go. Uh, ignoring the bottom option, go into your... Uh, press the white button to go into Ace. Uh, what we actually need to do is to unlock a door. <coughs> Excuse me. Unlock a door. Now, it depends where you are, but he may... <laughs> as you can see, I did need to gather my bearings, as it were. So unlock the door, which is in the same room just behind us. Then we can go back in. And what you're going to do then, we are going to cut this little lock open. And what you need to do is actually cut all of these electric electricity, electronicity to things. If you get too close, you will get electrocuted. If you get too close too many times, you will die. So you don't have to cut them all. Um, but basically try and just stick to as close as you can to the right hand side wall. And just cut sort of any ones that are in your way until you get to the airlock at the other side of the room. Simples. See, I told you it was simple. So once we have got here then, we can now cut the uh, uh, door for the airlock. We don't need to come back into this room, so near bother in panicking. Interact with the bottom stream. Streamy, and then just hit the marker straight in front of you, because that is the number two. Oh, and everybody loves a number two. Good for a good half hour anyway. Don't get these uh, people who have number twos and uh, stay on the toilet for like three seconds. Mate, it's... Especially in work. Anyway, let's head to the left after we've unlocked the door. And we're going to come up to a new room, which we can unlock this door. We'll come more on people's pooping ability later on. Are you fast? Are you slow? For me, it's got to be a good half hour. Take time to look at your phone, look at memes and everything, you know. Anyway, enough about people's uh, pooping. Let us <laughs> go into the room that we just opened up. We're going to interact with the bottom stream and hit the top right-hand corner one, which is number three. And then what we can do is turn to the left and basically just head through this already open door. Hit the blue button of life. The blue Peter badge of life. And we're going to cut the way open for the airlock. So we can just interact with the bottom stream right next to us to hit the number four, which is again in the top right hand corner. And we've only got five, six, seven and eight left to do. So, you know, getting through it, man. So, head out of the door and head to the right. Gonna do a little bit of a manipulation with these things, as it were. So, interact with the top one. And then what you're gonna do is hit number five at the bottom. But now we need, it's gonna be a little bit of chaos between number six and number seven. So, head back to the left, interact with the top streamy again. Eventually, there we go. So, hit the top streamy. Hit number six, so the top left-hand corner, hit number six. Then we're going to go to the left one. And then we're going to interact with the bottom streamy. And it may be confusing, but we are going to hit number six again. So make sure to hit number six in the top right-hand corner again. That will turn off the other streamy. So we can go back to the right. <laughs> oh man, a lot of exploding. And now, with the top one, we can actually hit number seven. That is the only way that we can do that. So, babada boopy, up the poopy. There we go. Job done. One more to do then. So, we're basically just going to go straight into the next room. So, neither left, neither right, but all straight. As we have one more streamy left to do, and it is the top one. And we can simply just hit the number eight. As long as, uh, you know, old AC's getting out of the way. And that'll do it. So, congratulations, we've done the thing we were supposed to do. Well done, Kathy. You need to be getting paid more than these while everyone sits down and eats us astronaut sandwiches and stuff. Anyway, all we've got to do now is basically hit, go up, hit the blue button here. And we are just, uh, well, we're heading back to the main room. And all we're doing is basically hitting the main console and then hitting another console just on the outside. Follow the markers is job done.
Opera team, Arc Labos is fully functional. Congratulations, team. One arc down, two to go. Let's check the MPT, over. Claire, the MPT is fully operational again. I'm going to re-establish the connection to the surface. No! What? No, Kathy! We don't know what we'll find down there. If you start the MPT connection, you'll be broadcasting our presence to anyone on the surface. Think before you act. Roger that. All right. Entry guidance design has been re-optimized. Preparing for EDL. Wow! We got some stuff going down, and it's not the good stuff, it's the bad stuff, as is the usual in any type of game. Nothing ever goes smooth, does it? Right, so we need to abandon the ship. Ah, and there's a lot of things left to do to do that, so hit the four buttons in front of you. Like earlier on, just get the buttons up to the markers first. After this, hit the button, which will lighten up to the left. There it is. Um, so again, instead of just running like hell, well, I suppose you've got to do stuff first, haven't you? <laughs> anyway, um, there is a marker what we've got to do. So hit the second button there and turn it to number 10, then hit the button to the right. Click the top one to number 2, and then click the bottom one and make sure that it looks like 25, or is 25, then hit the button to the right of it. Hit the top button down to 3. You know where you're going with this. And on the screen there it says 60. So we need to turn the dial all the way to 60. Hit the button. And then the fourth button. So it's incredible. You know, we're, we're literally falling and falling from the sky about to die. But let's mess around with buttons first. Uh, 40 is the last button. Hit that one. And then now we can finally make a break for it. We got some emotional stuff coming up here. Oh, we're not going to make a break for it just yet, no. Uh, hit the button here, press uh, right, right trigger to go down, slide it all the way to the bottom. Then hit Ayla and Alex buttons up. The knob all the way down right there. And there we go. Now we can finally start to make a break for it. Quite intense music as well, mind. R really cool intense music. Come in. Come in. Right, make a break for it. You will get electrocuted immediately. Ah! Oh my god, that hurt! Come on, Claire, you stupid. Whether you go right or whether you go left, you will always be smashed, almost smashed over the head by falling debris. So, uh, just keep going straight. And the pod's basically directly in front of us. So, head to the right and then watch the distressing emotional cutscene. And no! Three, two, one. Oh boy, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt clear in the morning. Ay chihuahua. So, uh, yeah, so, if you didn't guess, clear, the most uh, experienced senior one on there. Uh, has, uh, well, she got blown up before we did, so, well, we got that one. Right, interact with the screen right here, interact with the joystick, interact with the screen. You need to put the circle basically into the middle. Uh, you're not timed. I don't think you can die in this section. Uh, but if it doesn't work, just uh, hit the joystick again and then pop it in the middle. Okay. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to wait for a moment. I mean, obviously I should sound more emotional, but <gasps> we're just going to wait for a moment. <laughs> Oh. And then we're going to press the X button here on the right. Right trigger to push it down, slide it all the way down so we can deploy the parachute, which of course doesn't work. And that is what happens when you get, you know, one of those crappy little paper aeroplanes instead of the real thing. Um, I mean, oh god, the parachute's not working. 
Ah, that's my crying voice. Hit the button there and hit the button twice. And of course, everything's not working. So we now need to interact with the throttle to the right of us. So push that all the way up. Come on. Actually, for some reason, she starts saying my favorite things. Come on, you piece of... Come on, you piece. Come on, you. Excuse me? I mean, I'm flat and everything, Kathy, but uh, we are about to crash, and, well, in fact, we have crashed, and we've got no oxygen. So, this is basically the end of Chapter 3 now. We've got a little bit more walking to do right in front of us, and Chapter 4 will begin. What is the loneliest number that you'll ever know? As we're walking on the lonely road again. Nothing here, no oxygen, not even a single germ, no aliens. That sucks, Sarah and Ryan are not coming in. Anyway, just, yeah, walk forward, chapter will end. You got it. And welcome to Chapter 4. I hope you enjoyed my singing there at the end of Chapter 3. That was all for you guys. Right, so we just need to basically keep going straight. What we're going to be doing is getting a whole bunch of collectibles. Plus, whoops, sorry. Pressed the wrong button. Plus, we're going for our second out of three timed challenges. Now, uh, it's, it's going to come up quickly. But what I can say is, embarrassingly, it took me a lot longer than uh, I care to admit it did. Around 35 minutes of trying. And the reason being, there's basically two wall climbing sections which you got to do. Now, you can take your time with it. You're supposed to get to the bottom in two minutes. Seems like it could be tricky. It's really not. You can take your time with the wall climbing section. You still have plenty of time. I kept trying to overdo it. Um, as we enter here, make sure to scan this big old chunky bit of something right where Ace is in the way. The oxygen regulation pump. So that'll be about the tech, one out of eight oxygen regulation pump. So again, make sure to scan that before going on. And this is where the achievement is now. Now, a couple of things I should mention as well as we head outside. We're going to be talking for a minute anyway. Now, um, you have to do the wall climbing sections. You can't just jump to the other side because you will die. With that, the time actually continues to count down. So the time doesn't reset from where you were. 
even if you die, the time carries on. So if you die, it's probably pretty much best to just go into chapter select and start the chapter again. Um, when she says, what is this? We're going to look down for the excavator. Blippy and anyone with kids, uh, that word has been completely ruined for me. Um, but back to the achievement. Um, the rover's going to be straight in front of us. So back to the achievement. So you have to do the two wall climbing sections. That's fine. Hopefully uh, you'll get a bit of practice with that. And even if you do die, you can't just go into the main menu and continue. That doesn't work either. So it appears that if you die or if you end up falling down or whatever, you have to go back to the main menu, select chapter select, start up again, and you have to just go through this bit. Again, this is why it took so long. But let's begin. After you've interacted with the elevator, let's do this. So make sure to be sprinting. There we go. And let's just sprint, sprint, sprint. We're going to need to make a jump for it in just a bit. Not this bit. This bit's good. So when we jump up here, make sure to sprint again and then make a jump over to the next side. Now, if you do fall down one of these bits, there are steps you can jump back up. Uh, so don't worry about that. But this is the first wall climbing section. Just take your time and be careful with it. So jump up, left trigger and right trigger, remember. Then slowly uh, take them off and go back down. There we go. So take them off and put them straight back. So take your time with this, but I cannot tell you how many times I frustratingly messed this up. Because if you hit one of the uh, big rocks at the top, uh, Kathy can actually fall. And where she doesn't die, you do actually lose precious time. So just keep going. Uh, again, try not to hit your axe in any of the, you know, the massive rocks at the top. When you get further enough, you can just press the A button here to jump off. Again, take your time. Don't panic. That is the one thing that I've done. So, again, this bit's fine. Just uh, keep going down and you should be able to, as long as you're uh, taking L, left trigger and right trigger off and on and on and off. All good. Make a jump here. And this is another part I messed up too many times as well. So I tried jumping for the other side, but you have time now to just jump basically straight in front of you. So you've got time um, to basically go from the pretty much, pretty much the, effectively the start of it and then just go over to the left and then drop down. Too many times I tried just going for the big part where we can just drop straight down. Too many times I ended up dying, so be careful. Now this is the end bit. We can simply just drop down, make a break for the elevator straight in front of us. And that should be that one. So like I said, as long as you are taking your time, um, even if it, I mean, obviously it is slower when she's doing the whole wall climbing thing. But you don't rush. Just don't rush. Too many times I rushed. Too many times I died and got annoyed. But that is how you do that one. Cats always land on their feet. That's all good. So hopefully you've got that achievement and it didn't take you nearly as long as I did. After this then, have a look at the Herschel Mega Harvester. And that is about to take two out of eight for the Mega Harvester. Incredible. So that is the achievement. That is the Herschel Mega Harvester done. Now we can head back up the steps. We're going to take a right, go up the ladder. And press the X button to climb instead of jumping into it. Because apparently that appears not to work. So in real life, if you're struggling to climb a ladder, just press the X button on yourself. Uh, head to the left and we're going to go through this door here. And we're going to find an Astro Torque once more. So head directly, oh, in fact, no, sorry, it's the hologram first, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. So it's a hologram, so we need to do this little puzzle twice. So uh, just go as sort of close in as you can here, and then basically just back away. Back away, close to the table, you're sort of uh, aiming for like the left hand side of the table here. And then just watch or don't watch the hologram, completely up to you. Like I said, highly advised, always watching all cutscenes. This is a bit of a sad one as well, so... Watch or don't, it's all good. Uh, but again, I'm just going to skip. I'm going to show you what that was. That was number two out of seven for Family Matters. Um, yes, basically, Daddy was sad, wants to go back to Earth. And the other guy's like, hey, bruh, we can't go back to Earth. They're going to treat us like war criminals for basically screwing up the human race, which I get. Yeah, I get that. Sorry, big Kathy dog. Right, so three quick time collectibles we're going to grab here. Let's just head straight towards the marker. Again, linear path, only one place that we can really go. Oh, my God, I tripped over a rock. And that's the end of Kathy Johansson. So here's the streamy tower then. What we're going to do, we're going to take a right first past this spider leg looking monkey butt. We're going to climb up what looks like a terribly uncomfortable mattress. 
or like uh, an incredibly good looking dairy milk massive bar. You know, the ones that you get at Christmas and it takes you about 16 hours to finish. And here's the next Moon Man comic anyways. This is Mars Man, the man from Mars. Comic book number five out of 11, that one is. Right, so now we can just drop down. Again, I'd honestly had enough of dying up to this point with that last bloody achievement. Uh, so I decided to take the safe route down. Uh, right back, basically, the streamy point. What you're going to see right in front of us now is another scannable item. It is just the toppled crane. So make sure to scan this one as well. And then when we have a look, that'll be on running a colony 2 out of 17. Job done. Right. Back up the steps. So head to the left, head up the steps and go into the door. Directly to your right. This is the Astro Talk that I was thinking of earlier. So nip this one in bud. Naoki and Moylan. So, see that one, and that should be Family Matters 3 out of 7. Job done. And then what we're going to do, we're going to head out, and we are going to jump up. We are now going to need to wait until the big, massive dairy milk bar is uh, facing us, and then we need to jump onto it. Fairly standard, fairly simple. Hiya! Bloop! And that should pretty much always happen. So, uh, climb up a little bit if you so wish, and go to the left if you so wish. But basically, we just need this giant Cadbury's delightfulness. To turn around and then we can jump onto the platform. Yummy, yummy. Almost messed that up. Thank you for a big massive string that was in the way. Wait just a few seconds until the platform swings just a little bit further. There we go. A little bit closer. Jump up. Nothing here. So we're going to take a straight left. And we're going to head through the door. We're actually going to be coming up to our next hologram as well now. I still can't believe it, Isaac. In my wildest dreams, I didn't dare to see numbers like this. So then, that is going to be the people, or the Outward people, the people of Outward, whatever it is. Uh, the people of Outward, three out of nine, that should be. Sorry, I was a little bit late there with the Astro Tool. But there we go. So the answer is no nine nyachums. Uh, whatever no is in other, every other language. So... Moving on anyway, let's get out of here. Eh, this doesn't look ominous at all, does it? Oh, hell nah. Right, uh, just go straight for a minute. As you can see, the Astro Talk directly in front of us, so make sure to grab that one. Again, press the X button twice to collect it. Once to pick it up, once to collect it, and that'll be the People of Outwood number four out of nine. Mm, getting through it. Turn around, and we're going to be doing some wall climbing. The People's Favourite. And it's the people's favourite when you're not under pressure, under a time limit. Uh, just keep going straight and then turn back around, make a jump for it. Give yourself a little, you know, wiggle room right there. And we're getting another two collectibles in this room. One on the left here is another Astro Talk. So again, X button to pick it up, X button to collect it. Alina, oh, she doesn't want to see me. And that's going to be the people of Outward number five out of nine. So turn around, but before going straight down, you're going to see these uh, what are called prefab panels up against the wall. So uh, make sure to get that one. And there we go. That'll be on running a colony 4 out of 17. Right. After that, we can just simply mosey on. And as you can see, it's a deliciousness. We have got some wall climbing to do. So, you know, you should be used to it by now. Get to the other side like the chicken when his egg and his mama, uh, whatever the joke is supposed to be. Drop down. Don't die! As I always say, dying is a little bit of a minor inconvenience in video games. Right, 
Head up, uh, climb across the pipe carefully, of course. You don't want to fall to your doom. Slayer. Doom Slayer, that is. Head left here into a uh, said building. And when we open up, well, what do we have? We're going to start doing uh, some... A few little puzzles, which are actually quite annoying. They were annoying for me. So anyway, cut this up to get the streamy point laser on. And we're going to grab this big light bulb. I'm just going to call it a big light bulb. It's just easier to do that. So what you need to do is place this sort of somewhere in the middle here. Now what this does, when you... Um, what we need is called um, a splitter. So with this left-hand side streamy point, point it to the right-hand side um, output, or whatever you want to call it, energy point. And the right-hand side laser, I'll, I'll just call it a laser from now on. The right laser pointed to the left one. And then with this chunky old light bulb, you're going to put that somewhere in the middle, in between, um, so that the two lasers are hitting it. It basically just gives it a little bit more power. Uh, that's the layman's terms in for it right there. So we'll be using this quite a lot. Go inside, activate the MUPT. The MUP of T. And then you'll be able to see just to the bottom left of where you start. Press the X button when you get to it, and boom! That big boom is like when you wake up in the middle of the night dying for a pee, or when you're eight beers in, and you, uh, you know, you'd be absolutely weeing your head off after every five minutes. The, the splashback is incredible on that. Yeah, it splashes you in the face as well. It's the problem that men have, see? Terrible, isn't we? Right, anyway, we can drop down now. You should be able to just drop down here. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Just take your time. Be careful, of course. Um, you shouldn't really have a problem unless you've just jumped off and completely jumped off to your death. Um, otherwise, we're just going to go straight, follow the marker, and then we can head up the elevator. Finally, we're getting somewhere now with life. Do I'm Grant Mitchell. Uh, so, how you doing? Yeah, good. That's a good, uh, great blue eye you got there, right there. And of course, because video games be video games, especially if you're on Mars where there nobody is, uh, you know it doesn't go exactly easy and to plan, does it? So we've got a lot of axe climbing to do, as per usual. So just wait for the gates to open here, and then when it starts opening, you're gonna make a break for it, jump. And smash your axes in. There we go. So just go ahead and simply follow the road ahead. Because, you know, could have been any part of this game where they went, Oh, look, this was a nice smooth run till the end. And no, no, no. Video games do not work like that. Very much like a SpongeBob SquarePants or when there's fire underwater. Okay, when we're up, we're obviously going to turn around, go here. Um, whatever you do, this is going to start dropping down, so you need to run to the other side quickly. And there we go. Aren't we all just having a pant crappingly good time right now? Especially if we were Kathy Johansson herself. Right, jumping up, and again, a little bit more axe climbing to do. Obviously, just be careful. Obviously, every time you hit an axe into the hard wall, just make sure not to fall to your untimely demise. There we go. See, ain't nothing but a peanut. So, 
a little bit of climbing we're going to do. As soon as it starts swinging towards us, this big arm, make a break for it and jump up. Jump up to the second one quite quickly. And then we're going to jump up to the third one. And then we can just jump um, obviously up this platform. Now, we're going to start axe climbing up. But be careful. You see where these sort of uh, marks are in the wall right there. You won't be able to get all the way up. So as soon as you get up to the sort of second and third mark, as you can see, just wait here until one of them swings by and then keep on climbing. Quite simple. Simple but effective. And well, god damn, what seems like forever, sort of, we have now made it. So head to the rover, press the X button to get in. And then we're going to have like this little fantasy sequence where we're going to be back in our house. The house of old on the old earth bags. And uh, we've just got a little bit of walking, talking and nothing to do. So, nice and chilled section now. Just walk straight into the bedroom, have a little conversation with the hologramic clay. And, um, yeah, just wait until it's over. Just enjoy this next part. Even though you pretty much can't because you've seen clay get exploded into a thousand bits and smithereens. So, kind of hard to enjoy this bit, actually. It's on Earth. He just visits the moon. She really cared about this planet. So, what's your favourite thing? And I said... Mars? Mars has nothing but rocks and dust, Kathy. No, it doesn't. It, doesn't. it also it has... What? Aliens. <laughs> oh, Kathy, we're going to be here a while. Take a seat and let me talk to you about aliens. Next up, take a left and we're going to go into our parents' bedroom for another little scene. Kathy, you have to see the sunset. <sighs> oh, holy crap, I'm inside my dad. Ah. Oh. <clears throat> I uh, never thought I'd ever, ever, ever say that. And chances are I'll never say that again. Sickening. I'm so sorry. I'm in inside my hologramic dad. That doesn't make it better, does it? Because I miss. Anyway, get out of your own dad and head downstairs for yet another scene. I the team is bigger than just you. I understand why you want to do it yourself. I do. I, I just sometimes wish that. I, I get it. I do. Mum was so strong. But every time Dad left, it broke her heart. I'm sorry. But everything is right in all this. I have to be wrong. It has to be right. I know. I'm so proud of you. Is Dad leaving again? Yes. For a while this time. Some new important project. Like the NPT dish. Oh. Hey, he'll be back. He always comes back. Don't worry. So we can now head into the kitchen where Claire will greet us and then we're gonna head outside. I don't wanna go snorkeling, Claire. I want- Come on! Also, remember to click in the right stick to put your flashlight on. It doesn't make uh, too much of a difference, but, uh, you know, it's all good. Right, from here, it can be kind of hard to tell, but what you need to do is basically turn to the right to find um, a little a little boardwalk with a bunch of grass on it. And I think, I believe, it is right again. We're basically after our dad now. Um, but it's kind of hard to tell where exactly you are. Um, but eventually, after a little bit of soul searching and a little bit of walking around, you'll see this broken home. <laughs> That's a good metaphor for uh, our dad walking out on us and going to space. Anyway, just keep going straight, and this is basically going to be the ending.
So there we go, on to chapter 5. Now, what you will get, of course, is the achievement, a nice place to live for completing chapter 4, plus it was an automatic hologram, that last bit, uh, for Family Matters 4 out of 7, you're not a kid anymore. Why do older generation parents do that? Kids still need love, bro, no matter how old we are. You're not a kid anymore, I don't love you, go away. Anyway, we are now in the Rover for the first time, obviously, since we got it in the last bit. So driving, of course, with the right trigger. What we also need to do uh, on the lookout now for the next set, couple of chapters is find the Rover, or, uh, yeah, Rovers. So first of all, when we get into this open plain sort of space, we're going to take a right up this bit of mountain hillness. You should be able to make it. This uh, rover, whatever we're in, is fantastic. So, jump up, and then if we s turn slightly right again into what looks like a crater, you're going to see a little something in the background, and there it is. That is the first out of five. So, uh, there's not five in this chapter. There are five in... Basically, in, in, uh, in every open world sort of section when we are driving our rover there's going to be five of these about obviously i'll let you know when exactly they are so just press the x button by it and that will con collect the first one so jump back in as it turns out then sarah and ryan are alive somehow as we'll be able to see in just a minute um so drive back up then and if we just keep heading straight uh, what you're going to see slightly in the distance is a uh, bit of smoke. You can probably see it just off in the distance there. It's a bit of smoke. That's basically Sarah and Ryan's escape pod. That is a scannable item, which of course we are going to need to scan. Plus, you're thinking, how in the absolute nipple bags did you uh, get out of that one alive? That is one smoking, unsmokable, smoky smoke. So, get out of your car again. Obviously by pressing the X button, as you figured out by now. And give it a nice little scan. There we go, Sarah and Orion's escape pod. If you have a look at the Astro tool, that should be saving a planet 7 out of 8. So after that, this is all there is for the moment. So what we're going to do is basically just get in our rover. It's pretty badass, actually. And then we're just going to continue to follow the marker. It's just one big linear path in between the mountains. So just keep going for now and enjoy the desolate wasteland. Big ass, chunky ass rover cannot get through tiny little box crate. That's fair. So, we're going to get out. We are going to head straight in front of us, and it's basically one big elevator which is going to take us up all the way. It's, uh, well, uh, it could be better. I suppose we could still just be on the spaceship, floating through space, singing David Bowie songs, but, you know, maybe not. <laughs> Now, one thing I should mention is, from this point on, for some reason, I had real trouble scanning all the scannable items and stuff straight away. Um, so, uh, I was kept pressing the right trigger. As we turn around, there's one on the left here called the uh, the Ars Rover. Um, but for whatever reason, you're going to see a bunch of uh, edit skips because I kept hitting the right trigger and it wasn't working. But if that happens to you, just hold the right trigger for a second or two and it should work straight away. Uh, but that is about the Tech 3 out of 8, the Ars Rover. 
So, yeah, if that does happen to you, for some reason, I was hitting the right trigger and it just wasn't working. So just hold the right trigger instead, and that should get it working if it does happen to you. I don't know why it happened to me, but is what it is. Right. Hey. Here is big Ribo Baggins. He's looking pretty decent for someone who was smashed into the ground. How is that possible? No idea. Where's Sarah? She's uh, resting a bit further down. There's a door that you need to hook up to a stream point to go further. I know you might not want to hear it now, but... But Claire was one of the greatest people I've ever met. I know how much she meant to Sarah, and I can't even... I'm so sorry. Let's just... Keep going. Hey. We need to get this door. Oh! Are you okay? We had a really rough landing. Now, if you're wondering what's going on, Sarah is actually supposed to be down on the ground in pain by now, but apparently in my playthrough, she's as hard as nails. Right, so, crouch under here and go into this room. This is going to be the start of the, for me personally, was what was the most annoying puzzles in the game. Uh, so we're going to cut open the laser, and here is what is called a splitter. So you have two, basically, uh, two basic laser points on it, on these. Um, so you can... Obviously what a splitter is, you can hit it on the uh, right-hand side one there, and at the very right-hand side in this room. Obviously it's weak, weaker power, so we do need another one. So get the streamy laser point, shoot it at the splitter, that then will open up the door that we need. So you see how this works? Yes. So the splitter is, you can hit two um, points, but obviously it's a bit of a weaker signal. So use the, uh, use Ayla, we're going to go through. We are going to just pick up this. We can pick it up. Should be able to pick up this other splitter here. And we can just go outside and drop it down. Lovely. Wherever there is a bit of space. There we go. Come on, douchebag nozzle. Okay, there we go. Right, now to do this, again, a little bit of an edit skip because these confuse me ever so much first. But what you're supposed to do then, we're going to put one splitter here on the left, as you can see, one splitter on the right. So let's just, I'll just uh, take everything off for the moment, just so we can begin and make it all good. So have the, have the main stream and laser point hitting the right side splitter, the right side splitter hitting the left side splitter. And then what you're going to do is just hit one of the beams, only one of the beams from the left side splitter hitting the left one. And then the right side splitter... Go ahead and hit that with the right side splitter. So sorry if this is confusing. So I'll just show you again now. So the left side splitter here hit just the left side um, output point, whatever it is, the output point. Sorry, I couldn't move there. And then have the right side splitter, only one hitting the right side. And that will do it. So as you can see then, two splitters on the left and right hit the main the main one hitting the right side splitter, the right side splitter into the left side splitter, and then just have two points hitting either side, and that is how we do that puzzle. Again, apologies if the explanation is kind of weird. Um, it's kind of hard <laughs> sometimes to realize what's going on, and it's kind of hard to explain that one. Um, but that is how you do that puzzle. It's easier when somebody explains it to you, um, obviously, but yes, that can be extremely confusing as what to do first. But anyway... Everyone's up. We're all good to go. And now we're going to grab some more collectibles. Ryan, have that up your face, mate. Your beard is patchy. You need new beard. I can't say much. I've got a bunch of uh, ginger spider pubes on my chin. So, it doesn't make a difference. Right, when we get into this next room, as you can see in the next right open room, there is the medical cryo chamber. Like I said, if you're having problems with scanning, just hold the right trigger for a few seconds should work straight away, but that is about the tech 4 out of 8. So from here, we can just carry on straight. We are going to grab, uh, be grabbing another collectible. Head into the next right-hand side room to grab a Astro Talk. Talkie, Sophia to Yora. Yora, Yora, peace of poo. 
that oh, that'll be an unlucky name, wouldn't it? Uh, so that is the people of Outwood six out of nine. Hi, Yara. Yara, pizza poo. So uh, yeah, six out of nine then for the people of Outwood. Then we can just move forward, go left. Oh, that's a big uh, that's a big thing. We're going to be making our way up there now. So we're into the medicinal medical bay. Uh, before going straight to the left, keep going straight into this little kitchen area, whatever it is. Another astro talk here. Sahil to Hanana. Hana Banana. And that is going to be the people of Outward, 7 out of 9. So you can get through it, no problems now. Right, once that is done then, we can basically just do the whole... Uh, we can just crack on with the story. So, when we come out of here, head to the right... Yeah, this is the way, and then we're going to head to the right again and go up the steps. Oh, it's a long old, long old time, this one. And then if we head into the obvious room right here, um, just turn to your... Uh, in fact, there's a picture of roses, sorry. So in this room, directly in front of us, uh, you, might, you might have to... There we go. So there is the picture of Rosa. Again... Got no idea why it was doing this. Got bloody annoying after a while. But this is Rose's family photo. And that is on running a colony. Five out of 17. So make sure to take a picture of that one before we go. And once we head into the next room, there's going to be a hologram. So you know what to do with the hologram puzzles by now. Get the three yellow points blue. And, uh, yeah. Bluey. Diddly-diddly-diddly-lip. <laughs> Escorted back to your chambers. Report to your superiors for the graveyard shift. I'd heard you got an Isaac to help you out. And if we take a little look at the Astro Tool here, you that should be uh, on running a colony 6 out of 17. What did I walk in on? Too many people have walked in on me doing things, which uh, they asked that exactly same question. And Carps is on. Good old Will Ferrell quote has got me out of many a misery. Right, uh, heading forward down the only linear path. Head into the room here on the left. And you're going to see these two what kind of look like arcade machines. But they are actually prison accounting terminals. So it's starting to get real weird. <laughs> starting to get real weird. So what was supposed to be a fun experiment has actually turned into people being imprisoned. Uh, have a look at the Astro Tool, or the Astro Talk, sorry, on the bench as well. Remember to press the X button twice in order to collect it. And that is a divergence one and two. That is for the accounting terminal there and for the Astro Talk. From here then, we can just head into the jail cells. Go to take a left into this first open one. That's going to be Moon Man comic number seven, I want to say. Yeah, six. That's exactly what I said. Uh, so yeah, that should be Moon Man comic number six out of 11. Now we're going to be getting an achievement, which is going to take a good few minutes. So head into the door here on the right. For some reason, I decided to turn left and then turn around. Uh, but it is on your right. There it is. Um, head upstairs. We're basically going to be looking for a photo of the devs. But it's going to be... There's the medical. This is exactly what we need. But it's going to be taken in the terms of a lot of these splitters. Yes, this is one that really annoyed the crap out of me as well. And confused me too. Right, so what we can do... Uh, go as um, Ayla. Let's press the Y button to go as Ayla. Now, if we turn around... There we go, just up above. We can now get into the next room. And with that, we can just unlock the door. And if you were wondering where that was, there we go. So where we were standing there is Kathy, just up above her head. That is where you needed to go. Uh, cut this open. This is going to be our main streamy energy point. And there, are also, there is also a splitter in this room, which is good. So we'll have this one for now. So just place it sort of outside of the door. Hitting the energy point at the end of the hallway and the next one. So basically the only two in the room there. 
then hit the main energy stream B point, hit it at the splitter. Oh, I'll try that again. There we go. And that should open the door at the end of the hallway. And what we have as our prize is that big giant light bulb looking thing. And again, that is exactly what we need. So what we're going to do is pop this one basically in front of the laser here on the left hand side. What that's going to do then, what we can do then is actually just interact with this point, which is uh, exactly where we've been, just by the door. Now that should give us enough signal and enough power in order to get this cutscene, open the door, get this cutscene going, and uh, yeah, grabbing what we need in here. The only thing that we need in here is another splitter. So, yep, somehow we ended up in there, but... That's all you do then. So again, there was a little bit of an edit because I was getting confused and being extremely stupid. Uh, but yeah, as long as you just hit the light bulb there on the sort of left-hand side, we uh, should be able to open this room, grab this splitter, and job done. So what we are going to do now is get the achievement called The Gang. And like I said, there are quite a few steps involved. So let's bring this splitter all the way down. Head to the left, and then we're going to stop here because as you can see, there is an energy point we can hit. So we're just going to uh, drop that one and make sure that it is hitting that energy point at the top. Go back up the stairs and go ahead and grab the other splitter. So then, with this little splitter, what we're going to do is just head uh, all the way down to the end of the hallway. So, ignoring the random chair that's uh, ghostly in the middle. Uh, what we need to do is actually just place this. Um, so, we need to hit the other splitter down the end of the hallway. But we need to place it where the streamy point here, in this side of the room, where we got the prison account terminals and the astro talk, should be able to hit it. So, as you can see, it kind of needs to be, you know, quite tight enough. So pick it up, and then if we just put it sort of to the left, quite close to the doors right there, you should now be able to give that a little hit. Bam. Okay, I'll bam that again. There we go. Bam this time. So that's now bammed. So let's head down to the other end of the hallway. Now the door should be open, which it is. Jump over the table, head to the left, cl uh, crouch under, and there is this, oh my god, psychotic room. But pick up the picture for the gang. That is all the developers who worked on the game, so i got to give you a big massive bravo and a big massive thumbs up because this game is an absolute stunner so far. But that is how you get the gang achievement, and now we can just move on. So, after all that, that was a good four minutes of um, messing around there, but we do need both the splitters. So we're going to bring both of these splitters that we took downstairs and back upstairs. So what are we going to do for achievements, hon, you know? So obviously the first one we're going to put is right um, in this sort of hallway, just to where the main streamy energy point is. Again, hit it at the end of the hallway, the uh, end of the hallway energy outputter. Now my advice is actually to move the splitter just a little bit further in, so just in case you pick it up. Because if you pick it up, sometimes all the connections get lost, and you've got to hit it again, and it's just a bit of pain going back and forward. Um, see, exactly like that. So grabbing the two here, obviously all it will do is open the one, um, the, basically the one, the two doors. What we need the other splitter for is to put it in this room so we can hit this energy outputter right here. So go back downstairs, grab the energy splitter. And as long as you've got everything still set up as it is, where with the one splitter hit, you're hitting both of the energy outputs so that the door is open, we should now be able to pop this into the uh, into this room right here. There we go, so just pop it down. Doesn't matter where it is, you should have enough place uh, space. So hit that at the energy output thing at the top. 
head back down. And then what we're going to do then is we're going to use this splitter to... Ah, uh, see, this is a... This is a pain in the old butt. Sometimes, as I said, if you move it, it can lose connection. So, uh, yeah, that can happen. Anyway, what you can do now is hit the... Um, both of the doors there. There we go. Just like so. And then what we're going to do is pick up the giant light bulb. So, like I said, as long as the two spitters are hitting the two energy outputs so that the... Uh, doors are open. We can now go in here. Put it in front of the other splitter. Head back. Use this one. Hopefully I don't lose connection this time. Nah, we all good. And make sure to take it off the one, the right hand side door. So make sure to take it off the right hand side energy output. Beam it in front of the um, splitter in front of us and that will open up the next door. Of course, pressing the right, right stick and left stick will get rid of those, um, get rid of any connections. Obviously, you would probably would have found out by now. So into this next room then, you need to scan the table here at the far end of the room. This is kindergarten toys. So once we scan this, there it is. And that one is going to be on running a colony, seven out of 17. And of course, in the very same room, turn around and hit the next hologram. There you are. I mean, about three others have been looking for you. Aren't you a bit too big for that chair? <laughs> These chairs have gone up. And that is the next on running the colony. Eight out of 17. Job done. Okay, now we can just basically get to the end of this chapter. So, go into the next room. Head, take a left. And then we're going to climb up the giant looking... Pillows slash massive Christmas dairy milk chocolate bar. Again, obviously, try, try to avoid hitting the things that you can't hit. There we go. Climbing up. Climb over the pipes. Climb up on the pipe. Climb up again. I'm going to go to jump forward. We'll try that one. There we go. Jump behind, of course. And then we can now head to the right and start climbing up. For some reason, the game does start lagging a bit here for whatever particular reason. And then from here, what we can do then, we're going to head to the right and we're going to climb up on these pipes. Turn around, there we go, and then make a big jump for it. Try and give yourself a good running jump as much as you can. And do some more dairy milk chocolate bar grinding axe climbing up the wall. Now this one you do have to be quite precise with, so again, obviously, just be very, very careful. Shame we can't just take a piece back to Earth. The people of Earth would love it. So head left here when we get up, because there's no way you go into the right. <laughs> and if we head left again, what we're going to do is jump up on the platform box directly in front of us. And then if we turn around to the right there, jump up to the platform again. A lot of platforming and jumping this time. But luckily, nothing that can kill us. So uh, crouch under the pipe, jump up again. And then what you need to do is make another big running jump start. hey <laughs> Almost made it. I mean, it did make it, but... Uh, in, right in front of you, then, is the couple of pipes. Turn around, Kathy Bags. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Climb up the pipes. Climb up the pipes. We are almost uh, at the end now. I promise. 
Uh, turn around, jump up to this little platform, cut open the streamy point, and the streamy point is at the t uh, basically the top left. And that'll be it. Right, into this big, chunky, massive room. Now, we need to scan this big, massive ball. It is called a panachea. Uh, I, I thought it was called a pancreas, but it's not. But anyway, make sure to scan the big, giant, green ball thing. That will be a, the next scannable item right there. That should be the Arc Engines 2 out of 3, if you just wanted to check your Astro Tool quick. Uh, so what we need to do is basically investigate um, a couple of things here. So first of all, we are going to talk to Sarah, and that will be 1 out of 6. It's not a good time. I need to focus. Okay. When Sarah stops being stubborn, head to the left and go ahead and speak to Ryan. That's going to be two out of six. Oh, Ribo Baggins. This elevator works. And what makes you so confident? Really? With our track record? We'll see about that. The stream receiver is destroyed. Huh. Till we reconnect Arc Labos. It's not going anywhere. Then I'm afraid the Panopticon will have to wait. Panopticon. Hey, honey. Panopticon, isn't that a, a term for something like a, a central overlook? Eventually, Ryan does stop talking, but we'll just go to the third bit. So if we turn around, stick with the right-hand side monitors. You can see this main console here. This is number three out of six. I think this is the MPT alignment unit for the Ark. We can use it to reconnect with Ark Lagos. When we're ready for it. Good. And for the final three, if we turn around and press the X button again on the big pancreas looking thing. Uh, this is just basically to do with water. I think that's plankton. Plankton? Yeah, we used to have beaches that would light up the same way at night. Sure. No, really. We saw it on one of our... Next up, have a look at the big massive mirrors that are circling the old pancreas. And that is going to be five out of six. Ayla, that looks like a mirror. Do I look beautiful? And then here is the sixth out of six one. So you're going to interact with this. You're going to have a little chat with Sarah. And then we're going to finally get on the final stretch of this chapter. It's a closed pipeline that keeps recycling over and over. I'm in. Come check it out. Now, I've got to really apologise here. Basically, the last couple of minutes of this chapter got wiped out of my recording somehow. Very, very easy though. When we start, basically, all you're going to do, you're going to see where we start now. But all you've got to do is uh, walk straight, go to the right. Basically, Sarah and Ryan are going for a chat. So, walk straight here, turn right. There's a hole in the wall that you need to cut. Get Ayla up in the hole, listen to the conversation, and that will be the end chapter. So again, I very, very much apologize um, that the last couple of minutes of that chapter got completely wiped out. But that is what you've got to do. So walk straight, go to the right, cut a hole in the wall, um, head up through as Ayla, listen to the conversation, and that will end the chapter. And then we can begin straight away with chapter six. You will also obviously get the uh, chapter six achievement, the, the dream for these folks. So, we start once again in the rover in Chapter 6. So again, I do apologize about that last bit. I'm sorry that we've gotten straight into it quickly. But, remember, this is now the uh, the third and final um, timed achievement, which is all good. Thank Goddingly. And this is another one that took me quite a while. Plus, there are two collectibles on the way. But, as I said, it's all good. Luckily, what you can do... You don't have to restart, so you don't have to keep restarting the chapter. So what you can do is basically, if you're sort of having trouble just trying to get the um, achievement, you can, just, you can just go straight for the achievement and then walk back and grab the other two collectibles instead of having to replay this point because I actually hated doing this point because once again, it, this took me ab <laughs> again a about another half an hour, which again is kind of embarrassing really, but um, yeah. I was trying a couple of different ways to see which way was the quickest and what I could do to make it any quicker.
but you do have plenty of time so it's a case of i was trying to make jumps that were almost impossible but i just found it easier to do this so once we start we're going to press the x button here and then where i am pointing right now is the next thing that we're going to look at and it's basically a light and the Timer will start as soon as we've looked at the third thing, so then we can make a break for it. This only does have two um, ice axe climbing sections, so hopefully we're all good. Right, interact with that rickety um, death thing and then make a break for it. Go to the right, straight through the fence, drop down. We're going to make a jump and hit these ice climbing walls right here. And obviously what you need to do, again, just be careful. This is the one thing that I must stress. Don't rush. You can take your time. You do have plenty of time. Left stick to the left, to the right, and then press the A button to jump over. Make sure to smash your axes on the walls again. I kept dying at this point as well, which was annoying. But just make sure that you are on the ledge before dropping down. Job done. Right, and then we can just keep um, just dropping down quick as we can. Right, turn around, drop down. Climb up on this little platform here, and then we're going to axe ourselves at the top. And then we can just keep dropping down with no problems. I tried just dropping down straight away, kept dying, so don't do that. Right, make a break for it. Turn around, make a break for it. These are where the two collectibles are going to be. Because I was having the scanning issues, um, for whatever reason, as we keep going straight here, I have basically went to go and get the achievement, and then I came back for the scannable collectible. But the scannable item is right here. It is this big um, cart, or train, or whatever you want to call it. As you can see, it's not working for me, but hopefully it works for you. But that is the one scannable item. So if that works for you, great. So what you can do is take a left. Make sure to take a left here, where this rock is on the right, and keep heading basically straight here on the left. Straight in front of us is going to be the second collectible in this area, which is the rover. So make sure to press the X button as quick as you can. As soon as you do that, make a break to the right. Head over. Now there's a gap. Uh, there's a bit of a fork here. We're going to take the right-hand side, and then we're going to climb up on the left platform, or the uh, the left uh, cliff rock, whatever it is. Make a break and jump onto the ice here. And again, quick as you can, or quick as these slow little sections will allow you. Jump up. Head to the left. Jump over the gap. Jump straight up. Keep going, jump straight up again. And then we're going to go straight, and guess what? We're jumping up again. Ah! Jump up onto these cliffy out rocks again. We're almost there now. Jump up straight in front of us. To the left, make sure to get a running jump. There we go. Head up the steps, get inside, and that should be that achievement done. So, realistically, I mean, really, so that now should unlock. It took a little bit of time for me, which was annoying. But there we go. So, that is quick like a cat. Beautiful. Now, as I said, if you manage to get both of the collectibles, that's great. You can just carry on. I'm having to head back to just grab the one. Uh, but as I said, if you just wanted to get the achievement out of the way first and not worry about collectibles, now we can just go ahead, go back, and grab those two. Luckily, it's not one of those that we have to make a big massive jump or anything, we can just keep going straight, climbing down, and luckily not dying, <laughs> so um, yeah, so if that happened to you, that's great, like I said, we can go back and grab the two collectibles if you need them, um, and again, really, if the, the first, the, uh, here it is, pain, pain in my absolute butt snatch, but with that achievement, for some reason, that, that because I was trying very uh, various different ways, seeing which way was the quickest, blah blah blah, um, oh god, I absolutely hated the beginning of this chapter. The conversation. Oh, I'm your commander. God, just, I just don't care anymore, Sarah. I just don't goddamn care. Alright, oh, so anyway. That's done anyway. So hopefully you would have got that first time. Didn't die too many times. And again, I've just shown you where the rover is. Just in case you just made a blast for it. And you wanted to know where it was. So they are, like I said, the two collectibles. So hopefully you're all collectibly clued up now. So that should be the scannable item there, the cable car, the rover, and then we can just crack on, go the same way that we can, and head into the next section.
Right, time to get to the side of life. And all we're doing for the time being is following the marker. So take a right, go through, meow. And take a left to go through, meow. A lot of, uh, ah, oh, son of a, god damn, ugh. Why do I suck so much? Right, uh, as it turns out, don't, don't jump up there. Don't do that. So we're going to head up the ladder. Getting a bit nippy now, isn't it? Nippy noodles up in here. And we are going to come up to some more collectibles. So once we head into this room, we need to press the X button on here anyway for the story progression part. And then what we're going to do is go out of this room, take a left, go down the stairs, turn all the way around. So basically take a left here. And there's another Astro Talk to the right. There it is. Again, press the X button to collect it. And have a look at your Astro tool now. That's going to be on running a colony. 9 out of 17. Job done. So from this point, what we can do is just... Well, more or less, just turn around. Heading for the marker in Sawridge. There was no T on that. It was very, uh, it was very faint. So we're into the Sawridge facility. Uh, take a left here. Go around to the right. Uh, just uh, beyond all the crap. And then we can just head underneath here. Lovely stuff. Go inside. We're actually going to be coming up to another hologram as well. So uh, just keep... Uh, we're going to head to the left. We need to crouch down. Oh my gosh. Not crouching. Heading back up the stairs. MacArthur's pipe dream. Oh yeah. That sounds fantastic. Head through the open door. Take a uh, left. And then we're going to take a left here into research. And a hologram is... Very easily in our way, so we need to be hitting this bad boy. <laughs> it was like, it's like, it's like just falling apart. <laughs> Great for. And this next one is Family Matters 5 out of 7. So basically, they were having a laugh first, and then he was like, Oh my god, I'm a bad dad. Arg, Cry. Let's sob. Uh, if you wanted to know. But uh, hopefully, you're watching all of the holograms and all of the cutscenes. Anyway, head out. Go to the right. Because like I said, these are very emotionally... Some of them are quite hard-hitting cutscenes. Take a right onto the crane. Or the container, sorry. And then jump across to the other side. Incredible jumping ability here as well. Oh, I don't know if that's just the planet that we're on. Head in. We're actually going to be getting another Astro Talk now. So take an immediate left. Head to the end of the hallway to take another left. Man, standing on these things gets tiresome. And straight in front of us then is the next Astro Talk. Anna to Pow. Pow, pow. And that'll be a Divergence 3 out of 13. Job done. Right, so we'll turn around. We'll head back inside now. Get out of the cold. You deserve it. I wonder if Mars cold is any different to Earth cold. I suppose it's all the same cold, isn't it? Heading through the next left-hand side doorway. And you can already see the next item that we can scan. It's basically fungi grow cabinets. Lush. On running a colony 10 out of 17. So, yep. It's a slow process, but we get through. Turn to the right. Turn to the left to start heading down, 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 down. Head to the left. Uh, basically, uh, as we get down into this, well, it can only be described as a weird-looking DNA section room or something. Um, <laughs> that's not what we're after, but if we go straight in, you can already see the next item that we can scan. And that is the destroyed heating coil. So basically, the Outwardians... Uh, that's a, a, a divergence 4 out of 13. They basically used it for, obviously, heating, food, uh, food resources, drink resources, etc, etc. But just behind this main one is the next hologram. So do the puzzle. Do the tang. Do the puzzle tang. And get that one. So that should be a scannable item and this hologram. You're hurting me. And you are hurting all of us. We might not recover from this. I thought many things of you, Rosa, but... I didn't. Sarah, that Homewood group set off a bomb here. 
And that one is a divergence, 5 out of 13. So do the hustle. Do, 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 do. Right, go straight, uh, basically where the hologram was, basically straight, heading down the stairs. A little bit more splitter energy streamy point puzzles coming up now. Uh, you can head into this room if you want, it uh, doesn't really make a difference whichever way you go. But we're going to be grabbing the next Moon Man comic now, so... From here, crouch under the pipe, of course, because there ain't no, no other way you're getting through. Kathy, I'm sorry about Claire. Thank you, Jesus, finally. So head to the right here at the end of the hallway to grab this splitter. That's right, Clay, you uh, say, oops, say, you just took your time, you big dopus malopus. Heading through the broken window, and we're going to put the splitter, basically, you need to put it next to this box, at least next to this box. So make sure that it is next to this big crate box, whatever it is, and you're going to make sure that the, um, the splitter point is hitting the energy output there. Uh, cut open this main energy seamy point, streamy point, and hit that one at the splitter, and that should then knock the container out of the way. Job done. That is exactly what we need. We need to do that to progress the story anyway, but to climb up above it, climb into the attic where all the rats and stuff are, and grab this next Moon Man comic. Mars Man! Yeah, 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 yeah. So that'll be comic number 7 out of 11 anyway, so we're almost there, almost there. So, let's get out of this room, huh? Drop down, and then where we drop down, if we turn directly around, we're basically in the same room as what it is. We need to cut open the uh, floor to open up the next streamy point. There it is. And we now need to go ahead and grab that splitter. So, of course, the door will shut, but that's fine because we have a broken window to nip through. So, this nice. So, jump through the broken window, and we're going to put this... What you need to do is hit this uh, energy output here on the wall, but put the splitter in such a way, of course, or in such a position that the main streamy point here, the main energy output, uh, whatever it is, is going to hit that. So, skablamo Marge. And that should then be golden as nuggets. I mean, not really golden as nuggets, because what we need to do now is hit this stream point at the energy output there at the end, now that the box and everything's out the way. And we can just jump straight through. Okay, Job yeah. done. So luckily, that is not as complicated as the last bugger we did. So let's go for a swim, eh? We haven't been for a nice swim for a while. And before heading through and cutting this next door, Make sure to take a right here, and at the end of it is the next Astro Talk. Oh, man, these Astros talk a lot. Too much talking. Anyway, press the X button here to collect it, and this is going to be a Divergence 6 out of 13. And with that one, we can turn around, cut open the door, and make our way downtown. Making our way downtown, somewhere fast, Terry Crews on my ass now. <laughs> So what's going to happen here is it's a, a little bit of a one of the easy sort of puzzle, but basically you're going to be blown backwards, which is fine. As soon as the bubbles stop, uh, keep trying to swim forward quick as you can and then make a left here. You should just be able to make it. And that'll cover us up. As soon as the bubbles stop again, make a break for it and then hide in the right side. So there's a little cubby hole, a little corner off to the right. They should again just make that. And then you should just be able to cut off the fans. And it makes you just feel like an absolute badass. So once you've done that, climb through, go to the right, head up the steps. And now basically it's just a linear path until we get to the top. So we take a right, we're going to take a left. Make sure to take a left to go up the steps, not a right because there's no way to go. And... Now again, because I've turned the music off out of fear of copyright and everything, you should get uh, some intense, fantastic music as well. Uh, jump up in the elevator. Oh, I'll just have to make up my own music. Jump across to the other side. We're gonna find my father. Oh my god. Oh my god. Are you copy? So since Cat is getting delirious, we are going to uh, just basically well, make a break for it. Uh, 
yeah, meet the colonists. Is there people or is there not? So climb down the stairs, take a, the next right, and basically just keep going straight for a couple of times until you get into the next big area, and the cutscene divulges, and the disappointment is intense. Now, if you didn't watch the cutscenes, there is a hologram right here, which we need, of course, to interact with. If you didn't watch the cutscenes, what she thought was people in here was literally just like leaves flapping against the window. So, that was intense disappointment, yes. So, anyway, interact with this hologram. Once this is done, we do have another scannable item in this room, so don't leave just yet. I just spoke to Remco. He says the yield is unsalvageable. Urgh! Why'd that take so long? Sorry, sorry that it took so long there. Anyway, that is on running a colony 11 out of 17. Starting to get a bit heated now between William and Isaac. So, um, basically head straight in front of you. You're going to see these what look like sandbags. We are going to climb up. We're going to try and climb up anyway. There we go. Right, run and sprint to the other side because apparently walk-in doesn't do it. So, uh... Eh. Try that one again. So make sure that you are having a little jog. Jump over to the other side. Nicely done. Climb up the ladder. <laughs> Turn around. So we're basically going to the left once we climb up. And there is the next thing that we're going to scan. It's basically what looks like a weed dispenser. Now every stoner would be fantastically... Oh god. They pay a fortune for that. But that is greenhouse weeds. That is on running a colony. That is the next one done. So, with this one, we can actually just drop down. And, uh, that's it. We can just back out now. So, just, uh, head straight out. And we're basically just gonna end up going the back the way we came. Oh, in fact, yes, yeah, sorry. Just to let you know, we've got this little, next little bit. All it is, we're gonna head down the stairs. Big argument's gonna happen. Everyone cries. Uh, Daddy is not nice. Not nice to his beloved first daughter. What about me, Dad? Oh, Claire. Oh, Claire. Oh, oh, I know I love you, Rose.
someday. I promise. You naughty, naughty boy. You cannot say that to your first daughter, man. Or any of your daughters. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, that's gone well, hasn't it? Right, once that's done, head to the left. We go in, uh, you're going to see another door, which we can just head through. Oof, that was painful, though, wasn't it? I only care about her, not you, because you argue with me. Uh, don't go the way I came. We basically need to go straight, then take a left, then basically head back up the ladder, and then back the way we came. You scared us. What happened? It must have been interference. I, I didn't get your calls. Found the signature. Wait, you went in with us? There's no one here. Only, of course, because it's video games, it's not going to go entirely smooth. So drop down. Drop down to the elevator, and then it's going to go... Ah! My gosh. So immediately cut open the fan and swim straight through. But don't worry, you got plenty of time. Uh, you won't die or anything. You won't drown. So just keep heading straight. Sorry, the cut in the fan part was a bit quick there. Uh, that's because I cracked my pants and just done it uh, very quickly. Uh, so just head straight, <laughs> and uh, we're going to climb up this little rock. Jump across the gap to the other side. Now, the next part of water that we're going to jump into, don't jump into it. I jumped into it and got lucky, but what you need to do is basically just walk into it, because the spikes here will kill you. So as you can see, there's the spikes, so try to avoid them best you can. You're sort of going on a off path right here. It's not an off path, but it's kind of pushing you along. So try to avoid those. If you do die, you just start back at the beginning of that section anyway. A couple of spikes here to avoid as well. So try and stay uh, right and then left. And then that is that for that section. Yeah, it's kind of hard to control because it seems like you're just getting pushed. Um, but yeah, I died twice there wondering what was killing me until I realized, oh, there's spikes in the way. Ah, you're all right, mate. Just Give it a bit of a jog off look and uh, you'd be fair, just fair. So, go around the only path that we can obviously take, jumping up. And what we're going to do is a little bit of ice climbing. Now, not only are we going to be doing ice climbing, we actually have to jump behind us. Now, to do that, you look like, if you turn the camera, you look like then you have to press left on the left stick to jump behind you, but that's not the case. Just press down on the left stick. For me, it was hitting down on the left stick, pressing the A button, jumping across, and then slamming your axes into the way again. So, uh, yeah, I had to do that about three or four times because I kept pressing left on the left stick. Anyway, climb up, and just basically, this, this is all, it's just a little tiny section of this one, and chapter six will finally be over with. There we go, it's all good, we don't need to do any more. We're back into a nice little, um, I was going to say hotel section, but it's not a hotel, is it? So you'll get the achievement there, not the rabbits, not the bees. Before moving on to the elevator, as you can see floating down, what you're going to do is have a look at the top right-hand corner. That's the top left, I'll try again. There we go, and it is another scannable item called the ornery. The horny ornery. There we go, or the orrery, whatever it is. Anyway, that is on running colony 13 now out of 17. Job done. So we can now head back up. This is a short chapter, so it's not too bad. So short chapter seven. And then we got, what is it? Two chapters left. 
two chapters left, yes. Heading all the way up, we are now uh, back with Sarah and Ryan, so do you love me again, Sazzy boy? Yes, because I am lovable. Every Kathy is lovable. And that's... I, I didn't make up the rules, I merely writ them... I merely writ them down and enforced them. too late. Maybe we didn't. We have no idea what's behind this door. No. One way to find out. Is everything all right, Sarah? Leave him alone! They're just sleeping! Sleeping without oxygen, as it were. Right, so next scannable item is the security ASI. It's an ASE. Um, again, I was having some more problem. Or A-S-E-S, -E -S, so it kind of looks like asses, hilariously. So, uh, that's running a colony 14 out of 17. Before we do this, we are just going to go ahead and get an achievement which you can easily miss. So just head to the opposite end here, and there's a big window in front of us. What you need to do, press the Y button to go as Ayla. Hello! I like your nose. Fantastic. Head inside, go to the left, you can see Ace, which if you remember, was um, Isaac's. Robot flying thingy. Um, so I, I think you kind of got to get inside him a little bit before he sort of goes, Woohoo! What was that on the rear of me? G gets excited and then you'll get the achievement when Ace met Ma uh, Ayla. You can miss it because if you do all the interacting thing and then come into the room, Ace will fly off and you will miss that achievement. So that's why I say make sure to get this one first. Then what we can do is just head back to the beginning of the room. Then all we need to do is talk to Sarah, talk to Ryan. And there are a couple of dead bodies um, up against the door just after Ryan. So that'll be the three out of three. And then the unlockable door will unlock like a spooky piece of pooky. But there's more code here. Something was altered before the kill switch was thrown. Hard to tell without doing a deep dive on the diagnostics. Look at this. How were to buy the door? Probably guarding the bridge. The security ASCs, MacArthur's own ASCs, are facing them, not homeward. So. They were attacking outward instead of homeward. What's Sarah's deal with security ASCs? One attacked her on the moon. It's the reason she got stuck there. During the blackout, she went to investigate the cause, and one knocked her out. That all led up to what happened with your dad. Know the rest. Right. You see what some of them are holding, Ayla? Did these people barricade the entrance? Why would they block their own escape? Unless they weren't trying to escape. Let us go through the binoculars of whatever the hell we're going. So through the unlockable door. Take a left, obviously jump over. As we go into the left here and into the next room, there is going to be another Astro Talk. So make sure to grab this Astro Talk here before heading through, and it's on the table. Press the X button here to collect it. Raynor! Press the Astro Tool, it's going to be on running a colony 14 out of 17. So we're getting close now to unlocking some mega collectible achievements. Anyway, head over this part for a cutscene, and it's going to be a pretty uh, messed up one if you're watching it. Basically, uh, and there's going to be another hologram as well, so make sure to interact with this hologram. This is pretty much story-related. We can't miss this one. But if you don't want to know what's happening, you don't have me following the cutscenes, basically. everyone in the, Some people in the Outward program called themselves Homeward, or Housewood, or whatever the bloody hell it is. Didn't like what the other people were doing, and then, uh, well, this hologram will... <laughs> well, this hologram will... Reveal a lot of bad stuff which the main man done. Mars will ever be safe for us. You destroyed Odom. It's unsafe here because of you. My God. It was homeward. They used the ASCs to fight their way to the bridge. Wow, people had finally had enough of William, but there we go. The people of Outward, eight out of nine. So 
One more left to grab for that, and that'll be an achievement unlocked. Poor Willy Bum. Anyway, head up the steps, and there's more stairs to go up behind you. Here we are. We are going to take a left, and we can jump over this little table right here. Couple of more scannables to grab, and then what looks like a... a now, you should have taken the first left there. I accidentally went all the way around, but um, this isn't the point. We'll have to come back here in just a bit anyway. Um, but I accidentally went here, so um, let us just go back. So I do apologize about this. Where the, as you can see, where the main beam is right there, that is where we need to go. So there is a splitter puzzle, but it's not as complicated as the other ones have been. So head down here. Ace is going to nip into that room, which we need to get in. But straight in front of us is a monitor, so scan this, and it is the Housing Project sign-up station. On, on running a colony, 15 out of 17. So, almost there! Right, so, turn around. Uh, we're going to be grabbing and go straight up the ladder here. So, in this room where Ace went into the door, climb up the ladder. In the left-hand side, in the bottom sort of left one, is the Moon Man comic. So, that should be Moon Man comic number 8. If we have a look, you should be on 8 out of 11. Job done. Right, from here we can just keep heading straight. Going through this door. Boop. And before heading any further, turn, make a right. And you can already see the Astro Talk. The next Astro Talk. Taking a little beep at us there. Yeehaw! So collect that. And that is running a colony 16 out of 17. One left to do now. Excellent. Right. Go straight, and now we're going to basically just jump straight down here. That's all good. we got angles of steel. Now what we're going to do then is we are going to, if we go straight from where we were, we're basically going now the uh, place where we went earlier on just to get a hologram. Uh, so I could have got this, but I wanted to do it in that particular order just because we were it was all sort of close, closer by. So um, yeah, anyway, interact with the hologram in this room. Well, then make him authorize it. Rosa, please stop this. This has all gone too far. This is just the beginning. Why? Why are they acting like this? And it is a divergence 8 out of 13. So, that's all good. So what we can do, we'll just back out of this now. In this same room, just to the right of the hologram, we can cut open to get a main streamy laser point. And, as we'll be able to see, there is two energy outputs. One on the top room, one on the bottom. What we're going to do first is put it in the bottom one. So, ignore that one. Sorry, we're going to put it in the bottom room straight in front of us first. So, let's hit that. And then what we can do, we can open up the door. The door might be locked, so maybe open it up. Head to the left, and then left again. And now go as Ayla. And there's going to be a little hole in the wall. There it is. And what we can do is actually, what we have to do, in order to open up the door and get the light bulb, we need to pick up the splitter and put it slightly to the right. And what that should do then is go past the light bulb and hit it straight away. And that should open up the door. Then we can pick up the light bulb and we should then be able to head out. So what we're going to do then, pick up the giant light bulb, take a right. And now we basically need to get the giant light bulb from the top room. So head to the right again with a, in the room where the hologram was. Place it in front of this main energy, uh, energy streamy point. Now point it up to the top one. Make sure then that the one that we've just popped down is in the middle and in the way. Go as Ayla. Head up onto the bridge here. Uh, basically onto the upper floor. Take a right. And we can go through this little point. And with that, we can now actually pick this one up. But because we have put the one at the bottom, the door should remain open for us. Now we can just go ahead, go around, grab it, and drop back down. And this is going to light up the way for us. Lovely. So what we're going to do with this then, if we go straight ahead, we're going to come up to another hologram. Put it in the way of this laser beam right by the door. And then we can pick up this next one as uh, Kathy. And again, what you need to do is obviously make sure that the both, both of the light bulbs here are in the way 
or basically in the middle of, or at least hitting the laser beam, or the laser point, whatever it is. Now, when you've done that, we can head back, interact with this streamy, streamy laser point, hit the bottom one again, and you have know when you've done it right because of the music, plus we can now uh, crouch underneath and grab the next hollow of the gramnessnessness. Align the dish with our right after that hollow Instagram we we led up in this room and that'll be 9 out of 13 for a divergence so We're basically at the end now of chapter 7. So that's a nice short one. So we're going to activate the MPT the mipt The mrs. Pissy tissy wissy Obviously just in the top right corner there is the uh, point so you need to do some incredible splashback when you're eight beers in Oh my god Oh, splash back in my face again. By the way, that's never happened, of course. That is just yeah. Anne's jokes. And that is the end of Chapter 7. So, what happens is, something's happened. Um, the spaceship that was going to pick us up has now uh, broken into smithereens. If you don't want to watch the cutscene, broken into smithereens. Sarah's fuming. She wants to beat the crap out of us. Uh, well, that's not happening. So, we'll get the Like Animals achievement. We're on to Chapter 8 now. And we are back outside in the rover. We're letting Sarah calm down before she tears our nips off and feeds it to us. So, take a little drive straight. And this is a very, very easily missable another little rover that we uh, have to collect. So, try and stick with the left-hand side path as much as you can. I say as much as you can, you should be able to because uh, you're sticking with the left-hand side path. Providing you know where your left and right is, of course. Um, so, head to the left. As you can see, you can either keep going straight. We're going to take a left here. Uh, but slow down. We're going to slow down right here because right on one of the cliff uh, or one of the rock edges, if we have a look to the right, you can just see it. It's a very small looking thing, so it is very easily missable. So jump out here and go straight in front of us to collect the rover. There we go. Trying not to fall off the cliff. I did the first time and it took me a minute to get back on. But that should now be three out of five. So two left to grab. And there is another one in this chapter, which is nice. Noisy and sloicy. Right, get back in your rover then. And all you're going to do is just follow the way. It's a linear path now until we get to the very top where the destroyed spaceship thing is. And as you can see, I take my driving not from real life, because I'm actually a very good driver with no bumps or anything. <laughs> hmm. Right, once we get to the top, we can go no further, so get out. Head to the left, and there's going to be yet another scannable item. Of course there is. I bet you guys are getting sick of this by now. Anyway, it's going to be directly on our right. You cannot miss it. It's a big, chunky boy. There it is, Big Chungus, the remnants of Arc Labos. And that is about the tech 6 out of 8. So, uh, good stuff. Right, just keep heading forward. Just keep heading forward. Just keep running, running forward towards the marker. Easy.
A lot of crouching and grouching, but once we get up, we can now get up and jump up on the platform. There we go. Uh, nowhere else to go apart from straight into the red stuff. So what you're going to do then is do a little bit of axe climbing. So keep going as far as you can up. And then what we'll be able to do then is uh, just jump behind us. Yeah, there we go. So almost made it. You've done so good so far, guys and gals. Well done. Right, be careful because sometimes she does that stupid thing. Yeah. So she goes to run and then goes, Oh, wait, I'm actually trying to get back up on this platform. You stupid man. Anyway, if you can, jump across and then head all the way up, of course. Nowhere else to go. So once we have made it up, do not go forward, have a look back and jump over to the other side for another Astro Tauk. The Philosopot. Philosopot. And this one is going to be, if we take a little look, it's going to be the People of Outward 9 out of 9. And we get the piecing the story together for completing our first story profile. There's achievements for the 1st, 4th and 8th. So all good. Right. Straight on then. Uh, cut. That, so again, you should have that achievement, and you should have 9 out of 9 for the outward people. Take a left, take a crouch, take an up, and we're going to take a cut as well. And once that's done, we can drop down, head left, but before moving on, have a look in the outside of the window here for another scannable. This is Labos' uh, solar panels, which is about to tech 7 out of 8. So, uh, so close now. But now we can go left and move on. Why should you stop doing that, you... Oh my god, visible frustration on my face. Right, crouch, and up. And now we're going to have to do some very careful uh, moving across. Don't worry just yet. Um, nothing's going to start falling just yet. But obviously what we've got to do is try not to hit the thing and then die to our death. So just move across. And safely release. Release the bowels. You're all good. We're over that bit. Don't release your bowels because that's going to be uh, tough to clean out of that uh, spacesuit. So, uh, I'm so sorry. Right, <laughs> as usual. Moving on. We have the last of the um, annoying splitter energy bloody streamy whatever the hell they are. Puzzles, but this one actually isn't too bad. It does look like it can be very complicated, but honestly, it's not too bad. So we're going to cut this one open first, get this boy up, and then what we're going to do, if we head to the left, or sort of stick to the left-hand side, what we're going to do is get Ayla, pick up this splitter, turn directly around, and start heading up. So we basically need, as we're going to be able to see, so put the splitter on this platform right here. There are two semi points, energy points, on both sides that we need to connect. So... Head to the other side, pick up this massive giant light bulb. Ah, we'll just drop it for now. We could have just used Ayla. In fact, we will use Ayla in a minute. So let's cut another hole in the floor. So we can get this big streamy point up. We're going to uh, aim that at the left-hand side splitter that we just um, popped at the top there. Now we can use Ayla to... <whistles> Where are we? Ah, there we are. Right, get the old fish bulb up. Looks like a uh, Homer Simpson. Kind of uh, when he looks when he's in a Japanese advert. Everyone knows that Simpsons episode. Right, pop the fat light bulb up here anyway. Uh, we'll just pop him wherever you can on the platform for now. Just uh, just get him get him down. Get him down. Then we can go back to Kathy and now we can climb up. That's what we're gonna do. A box here and some cloth there and a big jump here. There we go, job done. Right. Now, with the splitter, we are going to use it to put the beams onto both of the energy points. And you've just now got to use the light bulb and sort of move it in a, in a way that it'll hit both of the lights. As soon as she says this one's good, time for the next. Put it down, job done. We are going to go back as a um, Ayla. 
and just go around to the side here to the right to find another splitter. And then what we're going to do is pop that on the left-hand side of this transmitter, generator, whatever it is. Pop it again wherever you can. That should be good as gold. Turn basically 360 degrees. Look straight in front of you. And on this little platform, riggedy, rickety platform, is another um, energy splitter. So we're going to pop that on the floor just in front of the main streamy laser point. So don't fall down. We're going to jump across. And we are going to axe, axe, axe. I'd like to axe you a few questions. Be careful here not to drop all the way down to your death. But we are going to jump on the platform below where we put the splitter. Job done. The reason we're obviously doing that is to use the splitter to go one and two. And then we can press the X button now to just drop it down. Lovely. Right, drop down to the floor. Uh, try and use the uh, slidey bit right here if you can, rather than fall to your death, of course. And then what you're going to do is use the next splitter that we put on the floor. We're going to put that on the bit, on the energy point directly in front of us. And to the left-hand side splitter that we've done. Place that, turn around, use the main one. Use, the, use it on the energy splitter. Bam. So again, that looked like a complicated one, but it's honestly not so bad. So, head into the only room that we can, which was the left one, and do the hologram stuffs. So there we go then, that is a divergence. 10 out of 13, woof. Honestly, this is such, such a brilliant story. It's been brilliant watching everything. Uh, right, now we're gonna climb up the old chocolate bars, the old heat pads they're called apparently, um, but uh, I, I still prefer the giant Cadbury's dairy milk for Christmas. Climb up what you can a little bit, and then as soon as you're able to, we're gonna make a jump to the right. So again, left stick to the right and press the A button. Of course, you should definitely know that by now. And now, again, this bit, be careful. What you need to do is just drop down onto this platform and then use your axe. It is tempting to just drop straight down, but you will die. So just uh, very carefully drop all the way down. And Bob's your nan's uncles. Into the door we go. And her, what's happening now? Right, this is not a tricky bit, but it may take you one or two times because stuff's going to go down. We're just going to drop straight down here. You can't grab onto these yet. What you have to do is wait until it collapses. Now jump and grab. There we go. Now we can start climbing up with no reservations and no poop coming out the astral. Hey, Jesus. Okay, a little bit of poop coming out the space astronaut suit. So when we get to the top then, we're going to have to run because there are falling platforms. We're going to try and stick with the left-hand side as much as we can. So start heading to the left. Jump on the left one now. Jump straight across and jump on here. Now this is going to start um, going... It's going to start falling, so we're going to need to start climbing up. But what will happen is uh, this is a bit of a time section. You do have time. You can take your time, but you do have to be quick. As you can see, this one will start falling. There it is. Okay, eventually it's going to start falling. Oh, okay, yeah, this one's going to start falling. So, you, again, you do have time, but obviously just try and be as quick as you can. So, move to the left one, go up, move to the right one, and then you are golden. Hopefully the hydraulics survived the crash. I'll head to the bridge now to check. Fingers crossed. 
Here we are for once again a pant crappingly good time. Right, turn directly around then. We go heading to the left hand side of here because there is a Moon Man, a Moon Man comic just chilling there. Number 116 of Mars Man. That is comic book 9 out of 11. There we go, so that's job done. Now we can just jump straight across ahead. Again, don't look down because, oh boy, if you're scared of heights, this not this not a good chapter for you. This not a good chapter. Right, heading up. Uh, nothing's going on for the time being, but we are going to get a miserable achievement and another scannable. So once we climb up here, don't go any further. Uh, what we can do is we can scan the Labos rocket here to the right. So the Labos rotation shuttle. Uh, now ignore these achievements, it's because I, well, I didn't miss it, I'll explain it just a bit. But what we're going to do is just wait here, look in the distance, and then what you're going to see is what looks like a big worm. Uh, appear out of nowhere. Again, ignore those two achievements. You will get them at the end of the game. And this is where we're going to get the... Uh, uh, I can't remember what the achievement's called, but... Um, yeah, this one. So once we have uh, seen this, and you have scanned the Labo sh Shuttle Rocket, we're good to go. The achievement is called Fefle Shai Hulu. Duh. Yeah, anyway. So, now the reason those two achievements come um, unlocked here instead of the end of the game. I did scan this one first originally, but I actually died on this part. But I, but because I died, I didn't re-scan that le uh, Labos shuttle, whatever it was. So if you do die here, make sure to re-scan that Labos shuttle before we start doing this section. Otherwise, you're going to have to replay Chapter 8 all, again, all over again like I did just to get to this next bit. So uh, be very careful of that one. Otherwise, again, there's nothing falling, but there's a lot of things in the way. So again, just take your time. No rush, no pressure, my darling. Oh man, this is getting nutter butters now. Right, jump up on the platform here. What we're going to do at the end of here, take a right. When you take a right, you will see this red door just up ahead. The reason there was an edit skip is because I took a left and I waited there for about two minutes before I realized I went the wrong way. So when you take a left, come up in this room. There's another Astro Talk right here. So once again, we're going to be collecting this one. So just make sure to do that. And that is a Divergence 11 out of 13. And then when this one is done, yeah, we're all good. We are going to head down here, just interact with the main console. Damn it. And of course, nothing's going right because that's the way this whole game has been played out. So, head out of the door here. Uh, it was from the right, of course, where we just were at the console. Head out. And what we have to do, we can, well, we can crawl under here. Now what we have to do is... Cut our way through life. But again, it's not too bad. There's going to be a missable hologram, which we will collect in a sec. So jump down to the right. Cut these three, first of all. And once this is completos, like now, that'll fall down. We can jump up. And here, we are going to need to cut another five of these pipes. And that will get the uh, satellite, or the MPD dish, or whatever it is, looking good, glorious, and beautiful. <sighs> oh, 
looking good, Mr. B. Right, turn around, but don't go to the left. We're going to go to the right-hand side first. Oh, in fact, in, uh, I think we have to go to the right, actually, anyway. So, um, yeah. So, this hologram, as we will see, is pretty much unmissable. So, unless you literally skip right past it, which I obviously advise to not do, do the hologram, get another ting. No, no, listen. The call is with the thrusters. If you try... Damn it, guy. I'm not your friend, buddy. I'm not your guy, friend. Right, so that is 12 out of 13 for a divergence. So, that's all good. So, once we are done with that, we can just head pretty much straight up the door now. And now we can interact with the MPT dish. It works. Do the whole thing with the aim. And jobs are good. Yes! Okay. So we're not quite done. Normally we just love to go home, but we are still after our papa to be all like, hey bro, what the hell? So this time we are going into Pantanoticon. So interact with the lever to get inside of the Pantanoticonom. We're bomb. Yes, the Panopticon. That's exactly what I said earlier. Head to the left and into this room. Uh, what we're going to do then, we're going to interact with this guy, first of all. It is, I mean, you're pretty, it's pretty obvious that it's not going to be, Papa, can you hear me? So we, ne we need to actually walk towards him, interact with him, to find out that it is the main bad guy, William MacArthur, who wanted to kill everyone and, well, basically, dude is nuts. So, what we're going to do from here, we're going to turn directly around and interact with the monitors on the screen. And as the Panopticon Terminal, which is on running a colony, all done. You should now be on 17 out of 17 for on running on a colony, plus 8 out of 8 for the tech one as well. Hologram here, so do the thing you do and get the hologram hologram in. There's no way out, MacArthur! Open this door! William, enough is enough. Reconnect Labos and let's settle this. Me, you, and Rosa. You, you, you both dis- Now, this is 13 out of 13 for a diversion, so now you should unlock the achievement uh, as the story unfolds, dot, 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 for completing four story profiles. Of course, I haven't got it yet because the game screwed me over. But you should unlock it by now, providing obviously you didn't die and do the whole messed up thing that I did. But you should have unlocked now four story profiles. So, heading straight on from where we were then, and through to the next section. Uh, turn to the left when we get to the door. Basically back out, we need to climb up into this little area. Chapter 8 is almost coming to an end. And then we've just got one more chapter to do. So, crouch. Head straight, and then we're going to crouch again. And then what we need to do as we turn left here, we just need to cut all of the things. And then we need to just put Ayla down and unlock the door for us to unlock the door. Interact with the hologram, and there's job done.
So, two achievements we're going to get here. Providing you've been following along and it's been all good, you'll get the Cinephile achievement for watching all the holograms and the story-based achievement for... Um... Uh, for this one, yeah. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. Reconnected the arcs. Blah, 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 father. Abandoned mission opera. Blah, blah, blah. So you'll get those two achievements. So what we can do from here, we're going to head down the steps, which is on the right side of the building here. Uh, just keep heading down. We are heading out. We are going to get our second rover as well, but it is a bit of a time section. So we have to be quick when we get out. Um, now, if you didn't see the cutscene, uh, basically Sarah and Ryan turn up. And Sarah's like, ah, you son of a monkey bars, come back here. And we're like, no, we're going to find Papa. And well, you know, so that's what so that's what's happening, basically. So heading all the way out, we're going to go down the elevator. But like I said, this next rover, so basically, it's going to be a little bit of a conversation with Sarah and Kathy. By the time that Sarah finishes, the dust storm will be too big and it'll automatically go to the next chapter. So if you cannot find the rover, the rover's in the same place all the time, so don't worry about that. But if you end up not uh, being able to find it before the chapter's finished, um, quit the, uh, just press start, go to the main menu, and then continue, and it'll start back here. Um, but obviously, I'll be telling you exactly where it is right now. So make sure you got your eyes set on the rover, which should be next to the marker. There it is. You can just see it in the distance. Again, it's not too hard to find, but because you're a bit timed, it's always that stinking pressure. So... Make a break for it. James Bond delivers Mars. Right, jump in and we're just going to gun it straight ahead. First of all, could have done with a bit of turbo in here. It does get a bit narrow, so be careful. But just keep going straight, keep going straight. And there's going to be a point in just a moment where we are going to take a right up a mountain hill. And then we're good to go. So just jump over this. And the right, right turn is coming up now. Make a right turn right now. Jump over this bit of hill again. And then take a left. And then you're going to be able to see it. There it is. So that is where the rover, and that's the rover will be every time. So quickly get out, quick as you can. Make a break for it. And as long as you have got this in time... It's all good. You can now literally just jump, jump in, drive everywhere, and the screen will eventually turn to Dust Storm. And we are on the finale of Chaperoni of Pepperoni. Mmm. Mmm, Pepperoni. Please, turn back. Kathy. Are you reading any of this? Kathy? Kathy? Right, one more little time then that we have to do this 15 years ago. Right, so head down the only path that we can, which is straight. Help me, Papa, can you hear me? We're going to take a little right, because there's nowhere else to go. And you think in a dust storm like this, you'd be sprinting a lot quicker. Uh, take a right here by the rock. Also, so we're in between the two rocks, so we can jump down. We're going to take another... Well, we need to crouch under this tree branch. Okay, you don't have to do it as slowly as I did, but there we go. Now take another right. And just jump over the log. Oh, damn it. Why am I so good at tripping up over my life? And now we should be good to go. You can probably just see the house in the distance. Papa will get us. Jobs a good un. I'll find her. Take Kathy to the closet under the stairs. Stay inside the closet no matter what. Mum and I will just pass as we can. Liz? Liz! Kathy, come here, quick! <laughs> Kathy! Hurry! Ah, 
And now you see, Big Liz's mistake there was thinking she was Prime Mike Tyson, where she thought she could take on a dust storm in an observatory. My bet is, I bet a tenner, that Prime Mike Tyson would beat a, a dust storm in an observatory. But uh, hey, that's how, uh, that's how much I think of the guy. Prime Mike Tyson, he, you know, even Mike Tyson now is <laughs> goddamn ridiculously scary. So, uh, yeah, sorry Liz, but that is how old Mama Bear passed through the winds, as it were. Right, anyway, all we're doing for now then, uh, of course we are in chapter 9, final chapter, so you're just heading towards the marker, but we are going to grab the final NASA rover as well. But just keep heading towards the marker for now, anyway. So you see the entrance, what we're going to do is turn directly around, but stick to the left-hand side path. So, I mean, obviously what I could have done was just basically taken a straight right and gone over to this point, but it, got a, it kind of gets a bit awkward. So we get to the exit, we uh, get to the entrance, we turn directly around, stick to the left-hand side path, and then it's going to be just up ahead. Would you like some rover music? Oh. Oh, never mind, we're already here. It's a tiny boy, so we're going to jump out. It is a tiny boy. Here is the last NASA rover, providing you now have interacted with all five out of five. Their batteries are low and it was dark. That achievement will unlock, and that is all good. Happy days, congratulations, everyone. We're flying through it now, flying through it like a, like a tramp on chips, like a pasty loves a sausage roll or something or other. Let me make some calming ocean noises for you. Ooh. Ooh. Da da. Arr, matey. Sorry, this uh, every video uh, comes packed with Simpsons quotes. I don't know if you ever noticed. Right, so since we are here, let's get out and let's get our bunsicles in them hunsicles. So, when we get to the end, we're going to use Ayla, <clears throat> excuse me, on the right-hand side here to interact with. Open up the way, and just keep on walking forward. Ah, oh, it's going to be an emotional reunion. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. Oh my gosh, it is Papa! You got my message. Yes, we did. We travelled all this way for you, you douchebag. Right, so what we're going to do is get another scannable and another missable achievement here. So you see all of these, like, poles with speakers sticking out of them? Well, you have to just stand by one for just a couple of seconds to get the simulacrum. Si si simulacrum or something achievement. Uh, but I think it's only one that actually works, so... Uh, you can walk with your papa for a bit. Don't worry, he won't go off on his own or he, the story won't progress or anything. But if you go into this little um, sort of tree area, 
There is the bird speaker right in the middle, next to this sort of dome building. So stand here for a couple of seconds and... Bing! There it is, everyone's favourite sound. Simulacra crumb. Job done, right. Um, so with that achievement done, walk forward ever so slightly and scan the beehive. It's a bee farm, and that is what we need. Bee farm, and that is saving a planet 8 out of 8. Now again, I unlocked this achievement here, but you should have unlocked that earlier on when you interacted with the hologram um, with the dead MacArthur guy. Right, again, for some reason, your dad seems to have not learned, but apparently we've got to be right by him for him to use his stinking legs. So, nothing else to do but take a nice walk and enjoy that posh old English accent, as it were. Authorise the request, Argus. Is that MacArthur's ASC? Yes. I, I took him with me after the, uh... Well... He's the only people that survived. Yes. I really wish there were more, but it was... It was, it was a dark day. We've been through a lot. The division, the violence. Our energy resources are really limited ever since that day. Uh, the only thing that we have in abundance is oxygen coming in from habitats. Besides that, we really have to balance what our resources allow us to sustain, which is, which is difficult. But we made it work. It's so beautiful here. It looks even prettier than Earth. Yeah. The other colonists, they're not really happy to see me, are they? Oh, it, it, it's not that. Um, I never told them I sent that message. I don't think they ever expected to see anyone else ever again. Oh. Come on then, bruh. What are you doing? Do you want to open your gate or what? God. So apparently we've got to do it then. I'm a guest, right? And I've got to open your gate for you. You g Laziness. But it's all good. I suppose we forgive you if you feed me, because apparently we haven't eaten for the last... However many days, unless they got that sort of astronaut space bread squidgy stuff that sticks in your mouth. Hmm. I guess I just couldn't let it go. Dad. I... I don't have any words. Have a look around. To be fair, mine is a hell of a builder. That is looking like a good house. Anyway, what we're going to do is go in and straight up the stairs and straight into the room, which is basically straight in front of you. For some reason, I decided to go right. We need to go to the room straight in front of you to interact with this astro talk. Once again on the floor, Stanley. Get daddy another beer, would you? And that is Family Matters, 7 out of 7, and that is for reading all Astro Talks as well. So turn directly around, don't go down the stairs yet, head to the opposite side, take a left, for Moon Man comic number 10 out of 11. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not messing with you, man. 10 out of 11, unbelievable. Who's leaving these freaking things about? So now we can head downstairs, uh, we're going to go straight to the kitchen, talk to our papa... Again, a lot of uh, emotional stuff's going to happen. Some good, some bad. But obviously what I'm doing is just skipping all the cutscenes as I have been doing. What we need to do when we start, Sarah's going to be with us now. Hello. And just hide in the little uh, cabinet, or the, the under the stairs once again. Kathy? Kevin was certain, Isaac. It's Sarah Baker. She must have taken our rover back over here. Kathy, how did they even get here, Isaac? How did they find us? She's gone. What? Kathy is gone. Where did she go? I don't know, but find her. Please. Now! Unison, my daughter the intruder are missing. Lock off the entrance and check every inch of the dome. Find them. 
You're okay. I'm fine. Let's go. Follow me. I time to blast it, Iron Man. Right, just simply follow Sarah. There's nothing else to do here apart from follow Sarah. When she tells you to hide, you hide. Job done for the time being. Quick, hide! We can't leave the bio for their unmanned this long. Someone needs to go back to the Ark and we'll have bigger problems if we don't find him. Now let's go. It's clear. <sighs> okay, just give me one second. You know something, say, this is kind of an inconvenience, always at the wrong times. Right, anyway, what you need to do is interact with three things here. First of all are the people in the distance, so we're not going straight for the Ark. No, no. The second one is the maintenance hatch just below it, or just below the people. There that one is, so interact with that. And then the third one is the big dome-looking building on the left-hand side. And then we can make a break for it. How and where? That's the pump regulator that controls the incoming oxygen from Ark Habitas. You're right. Why? Look, no one is wearing a pressurized suit. If I temporarily turn it off, everyone will be forced to suit up or get to safety. We could use that distraction to get you in there. I can use the maintenance tunnel to get to the facility unnoticed. Kathy, I. I don't know about this. I'll meet you at the entrance. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> I didn't know what was wrong with her lips then. She was barely moving. Right, make a break for it. You don't have to sneak or anything like that. We can just see. Hello! Ah, they didn't even see me. Ma, losers! Right, heading to the left here. I am dad, but uh, man, you are a bit of a douche nozzle, huh? Keep going, and then we're going to take a right. Straight up the steps. And we've got a few things to do here. So what we're going to do, we'll jump down. Jump down the ladder. And we'll just go straight into the next room here. Oh, in fact, we do need a bit of Ayla on uh, on this stuff right here. So get Ayla on it. But doink a doink So there are four buttons. What we need to do is hold the third button. Again, left to right is one to four. So we're going to hold the third button. Keep holding it until the heat pad, as you can see, is all the way over to the left. Or the Dairy Milk Massive Legend one. Then interact with the second one and then put that roughly in the same spot. There we go, that'll do. Uh, so what you need to do then, even if you fall it doesn't matter, you can just jump up. But we do need to climb up. Climb up, climb up, get down. Climb, 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 climb. Climate change. People are all pissed off about climate change. Now be careful not to hit the uh, metal and fall, because it's just a bit of a minor inconvenience. So, uh, interact with the console. You're going to push a couple of buttons and nothing's going to work, of course, so that's all good. So what you need to do then is just cut all of the golden flashy things that are on the pipes. choice. Waiting, 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 waiting all day long. Oh, we're not in a rush or anything. Oh, there we go. Look, jeez. Right, so once the bridge comes down, head to the right. You can jump over the pipe, climb underneath this bit of debris, climb over the next pipe, and then we're going to cut this next pipe. Uh, for whatever reason then, um, jump on the right-hand side of the pipe to... Uh, to basically get it down if it hasn't already. Um, for whatever reason, it wasn't working for me. So, that's nice. 
Ah, there we go. Right. Back on the outside. Head left. And make a break for it. Our papa will appear. And he'll be like, Oh, no. Pl please don't do this, darling. Please. I love you. So we need to cut this part. We are going to be coming up to an achievement where we uh, have to make it through the Tesla chambers without taking damage, but it is easy enough. Uh, oh, let's take, take a look at that NPT beam. Looking good. Uh, you carry on cutting anyway. Uh, moon bear. You know what? Your mother's a moon bear. Whatever the hell that means. Uh, so <laughs> your mother's a pubic hair. Actually, no, Dad. You're a pubic hair. Right, so uh, just keep on heading straight through, once again, the linear path. Take a left and up the platform, turn around, jump onto the end of the platform. And we're gonna t and we're gonna climb up now. Once we have cut the next uh, bit of drain or the, whatever the next thing that we're gonna cut, uh, this is where the achievement will begin. Again, like I said, it is very easy enough. And even if you do take damage, press start, quit out to the main menu, and continue. And you will start again, and you will not be penalised. Not like the time challenges. If you do get damaged, like I said, start, quit out. Go in to continue, you'll be fine. Right, head to the right and go up the chocolate stairs of life. The Tesla beams will start shooting down, so of course just wait till it finishes. As soon as it does, head to the left and then make a jump. As quick as you can, make a jump all the way to the left. If you f if you fall at that part, it's fine. Just go up again and try it without getting damaged. Otherwise, we can climb up and jump to the left once again. Uh, just wait for a second. I only wait here because it does go in quite quickly. But as soon as the Tesla comes back out, make a jump for it onto the top. And jump again. Now, spinny platform things. Again, take your time. No rush, no pressure. But we're going to jump on these ones. There's going to be one that's coming towards us. So jump onto these. Now, just wait here. Uh, but we are going to climb up some more chocolate heat pads. But you do need to be careful here because you can jump, but sometimes she may miss. I got lucky with this one. Really lucky. <laughs> so just be careful on that bit. Otherwise, once again, we can climb up. And we are going to make it uh, to the left. We're going to jump to the left as soon as we can. Oh, thanks. Yeah, God, jeez, it's only taken you about 15 years, douche nozzle face. Right, this part I did actually die on. Uh, so what you need to do, it's, it's a rotating one. So you just need to keep... Aiming the left stick up and left, up and left, up and left, and then as soon as you start getting close, just make a jump for it, and hopefully you should make it. And that is it. That is literally it. You, the achievement should unlock now. Like I said, I got damaged at that point, so again, I quit out, to, um, press start, went to the main menu, continued, started again at that section, and the achievement still unlocked. So there we go, job done. But that is um, easier than the one from Deliver Us the Moon. Right, make a right here. Because left, your dad will catch you. So make a right and get in here with... Um, I was going to call her Claire, but she is long gone. With Sarah. And all we're going to do is talk to our papa. And we're going to get a couple of cutscenes. So yes, if you remember, if you have played Deliver Us the Moon... There was that one achievement where you had to not get hit by any of the big chunky lasers, which took a few tries, I'll be honest. That Tesla one was a bit easier. You don't have to do this. Automated launch sequence initiated. Quick. Bolt Arc Vita immediately. Departure oh. imminent. Sarah, I'm coming to get you. We're gonna make it. Hold on! Automated launch protocol initiated. Okay then, this is the final thing that we got to do, and it will be the game's end. We've got an epilogue as well for a few minutes, but this is the main thing, main story, basically all done. So, 
First of all, interact with the two buttons or hold the top one until the line there gets the purple, then choose the check button. Click! We win. Right, as you can see, nitrogen 78, oxygen 22. So nitrogen on the left here on the top one, put it to 78. Put the oxygen down to 22 or up to 22. And then click the check button underneath that. Click! Man, I'm so good at this astronaut stuff. Right, uh, now we're going to choose the button to the left of the console. Uh, we are going to press down and then slide that down to the bottom. You know how people are good at Football Manager and they some people have actually become Football Managers? I feel confident in my abilities to now become a Spaceman Astronaut Man. I can't even say it. Astronaut Man. Um, but pretty much, no, I'm lying. Right, when this part <laughs> when this part kicks off, we just have to interact with the three buttons here. Go, go. Power round shows. There it is. So, one button, two button, three button. Job done. Sarah's on it. Already attracted, subtracted, whatever. Right, uh, have a look at the left-hand side here. And again, all we're doing here is just putting the um, things at the bottom to the targets, wherever the hell they are. So uh, move them up, slide them up. Right, now we're going to put this knob and turn it all the way up to zero. Then we're going to use the switch next to it, right trigger to press down, slide it down. And then we're going to use the joystick and then move that down. So we orientate ourselves out of this, boy. Beanie cap. Right, visor checks are, <laughs> visor checks are a go-go. And with this one then, all we're doing, just look. Just by your leg right there, we're going to slide that up. Slide it up your leg. Press the button. And transfer complete. We're on to internal power. Initiate sound suppression, say. Come on, Jesus Christ. Right, press the button once. You'll have to wait for just a few seconds. But this is the last thing. And that is the game done, apart from a few minutes of epilogue. Smash the thruster. Right trigger to engage. Push forward. Incredibly, without moving your hand. Unbelievable stuff. And Moon Rocket Bear is a go! By the way, Ryan is still on board, just in case you were, were, were wondering where he was. He is still on board. But that is the end of the main chapters. Hooray! We got it! So, let us epilogue ourselves, is it? Job done. Right. The wants and needs achievement will unlock. That is basically story related, so that's all good. We're going to get our last Moonman comic now. So what we're going to do is take a right here. And it'll be floating in the middle, just chilling. Oh, fantastic. I love you, Imzadi. Love you too, hi, yeah? Right, there we go. So once we have interacted with the Moonman comic, you should now get that final achievement. And then we've just got one more thing left to scan, but we have to wait until the... Uh, talking stops for the unlocked door to open so it's that door right there literally right next to the moon man comic is where we need to go but we've got to wait for a few secs i granted his request he's down the corridor thanks did you tell him about claire already no i'm gonna tell him right now good luck <laughs> So once the talking has stopped there, now we can go in. Now, very important, before talking to your father, make sure to scan the last item. So as we come down here, it's going to be basically the arc engine, the final arc engine. It should be right in front of you anyway, so make sure to scan it first. Pangia, now you should get the Chronicler and the Curiosity Didn't Kill the Cats achievement. And then you should only have one achievement left. So what you need to do... Talk to your papa right there. Now we'll give it a spin round. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, ah, there he is. So interact with him. Job done. A long cutscene will happen. He'll basically go through a whole load of things. Plus, if you do watch the cutscene, again, obviously uh, a lot of credits here as well. So big shout out to everyone who literally made this game. It was honestly fantastic. But if you did watch the last cutscene, Sarah says something very interesting at the end. Uh, basically, if you don't want to watch it or you haven't watched it, She's trying to get in contact with Mission Control. She's own, she, and she hasn't been able to. And she says, trying to get in contact with you. This is the third time now. So my assumption is there may be there's going to be a third Deliverous game. 
and hopefully it's going to be deliver us Earth where we try and get Earth back to normal. But uh, who knows? That's just my guess, but we will see. But there we go. Deliver us Mars. That was an honestly fan fan fantastic game. I really enjoyed that, and I hope you did as well. So again, hope you enjoyed the game. I hope you enjoyed the guide on that. Everything helped. Please, if it did, let me know if it did help. Uh, don't forget to share, like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff as well. Again, thank you so much for watching. Big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. Again, thank you so, so much for watching. You absolute legends. And I'll see you in the next one. Biggity, biggity, lovingly, homingly, biggity, biggity dog. Live.